Okay. Here we are again. Make a minor adjustment. There we go. I think that should be good. Stay there. There we go. Now it should be good. And we'll do the usual thing where we wait out two cycles of the music before starting, so probably about two and a half minutes, three minutes, we'll get started. <sighs> Quiet as a church mouse over here today, other than the background noise. Hopefully that's not indicative of a lack of enthusiasm on my part, because that would not be good. No, I just woke up out of a dead sleep about 7 this morning, and I've been kind of bleh since, but yeah, it's fine. This game will make me enthusiastic. I'm sure of it. If I can remember where I'm going. Because <laughs> that's definitely something that you probably want to do. Speaking of things I probably want to do, I'm going to open my notes while I'm getting ready to start here. Ah, the sea. The sea almost as far as the eye can see. Frankly, I'm sick and tired of the sea. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Final Fantasy Legend 3, the stream edition. Last time, we began the game and traveled into the past using the fancy space-time flying machine, the Talon, that's locked up in the temple over there. And uh, when we traveled to the past, we rescued a girl named Lara, who was supposedly, according to our elder, going to be rather helpful in the present day. But before we take her back home, we should probably, well, to her new home, I should say, we should probably make use of that dive magic that we got from Granny last time. So let's take a look and see what we can find at the bottom of the ocean, shall we? Just 
press A while you're uh, out in the water. Well, you can use it almost like you're surfing in a Pokemon game. And then just press A while you're out in the water and you can go down underwater. I apologize for the scan line looking things that are happening all over the screen right now. I have no idea why they're there. It probably has something to do with the way the game is emulated, but it's a thing that happens. I don't know how to fix it. Anyway, we appear to have found the underwater town of Moo, so let's see what they've got here, shall we? Well, yeah, otherwise I would have drowned before I got here, so what a silly question. Uh, yeah, I could use a little healing, sure. Oh, I mean, I can cut into my wallet a little bit. I got 32,000 gold to throw around, but that being said, we'll probably cut into that a little bit today, so... Oh, well, how intelligent is it? Hmm, only goes in ripe soil, huh? Okay, well, I'll have to check that out. I know, I happen to know where there is some ripe soil, so I'll see what I can find. And they got some new weapons here for us. Uh, do I want to grab any of these right now? I don't think so. I think I want to wait till the present day, because if we go back to Moon now that we have Dive in the present, I think there's stock changes, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Did I press fast by accident? Yes, I did. Oh, I fixed it. Let's see here. Uh, they have Confuse and Para. Those two I would like to get. Confuse more just to heal it, uh, in case it happens to anybody before we get to the point where I can do anything about that, which is not for a little while yet. So, yeah, let's buy a Confuse, and let's buy a Para, shall we? Now, who's got what in terms of magic right now? Curtis, what do you have? You have Sleep. And Gloria does not have a status move. So, let's give Curtis Confuse. And we'll give Gloria Para. So that way she has a status move for herself in case she needs something uh, that isn't elemental. Because that may happen. There may be enemies that are... Well, they're not going to be immune to both fire and ice. Because... Unless they're immune to all elements, but... Uh, probably won't run into those for a little while. Anyway, there's a storehouse over here, so let's check it out. There's an Ifram Seed, awesome. And a Soft Potion, cool. Well, now we can go plant that sucker up on mainland, so we'll go do that. Well, this almost looks like it's gonna be a storeroom, but it doesn't look like it's built yet. Remember that for a little later, because we'll be coming back here over the course of the various time periods as they build things up here, so. Wow, this soul guy really gets around, doesn't he? Well, that, that's what we're hoping. We're hoping that we can eventually find this guy and have him stop the water entity, especially since everybody seems to think, yeah, he can he can do it. Out of anybody, he can do it. So, yeah, we'll try to find him if we can. Here's some Cure 2 potions here, but also, more importantly, they start selling elixirs here, which allow you to revive people. Uh, they fully restore HP, and they also revive people. So I'm going to buy a few of them. Probably just three for now. Should be good. Yeah, as you can see, cut into our money just a little bit from that alone, but well, that's all right. I mean, it's better to have them than to not. Uh, this will probably be the inventory that I'll be using for a little while anyway. We'll probably keep this Cure 2 potions for a little bit. Softs will probably be there for the rest of the game. Elixirs will probably be there for the rest of the game. Oh, excuse me. And yeah, it should, should all go well for us, I think. Uh, what do you guys got here? Pendants. Are pendants any good? They're better than the belts that we have, so I guess I could grab that. They give you about the same defense, I think. Um, but they give you an immunity to something that we don't currently have, so I guess I'll buy four of them. And I know I haven't bought any gloves for anybody just yet, but I'm still going to hold off on buying them, because I get the feeling that we're going to be getting some better gloves uh, when we go to the present. So, But for now, let's equip those pendants. As you can see, they give us the same stuff as the uh, defense, as the belt. But if we look at talents, we're now immune to curse. So that's nice. Uh, curse, I don't think, comes up all that often. At least I haven't seen it hardly at all when I've played, so... Yeah, I can't really say one way or the other whether or not it would uh, be a relevant status to block, because it really doesn't do a whole lot for me, so... Uh, but yeah, it takes care of that. we got four belts we can sell now, and then... After that, uh, we'll go check what's up above here, and then we'll head out with the Ephraim Seed. And we gotta go find the Ripe Soil, and we can actually go there from underwater. You can kind of skirt around all the continents and everything by, like, going around or underneath them. So we'll go do that after we're done. 
Yeah, that's what we've heard too. We've actually been to Lay, and well, it, it didn't look like we contracted anything, but then again, uh, we could have brought it here by accident, and we've just been interacting with every townsperson without wearing a mask. How appropriate to the modern day era. <laughs> We may or may not be infecting this entire town with the water hag disease right at this moment. Fantastic! Well, yeah, you don't want to drown, but also there's monsters out there, so... Holy crap, man. That's what we're hoping for! We'll find some sunken treasure! Well, yeah, I mean, otherwise how would you guys get in and out of here, you know? Wouldn't make a whole lot of sense otherwise. And this place isn't even built yet, so I guess we'll give them some time, and eventually they'll get it built. But uh, first, they got to work on that one that's over there they already started constructing. So I think that's it for the town of Mu. Just a quick little side venture. Uh, we'll take the Ifram seed up to the ripe soil, and we will take care of that. Then we can go back to the present with Lara. But before we do that, I actually want to head off and try to find some of that sunken treasure they were talking about. I have a rough idea of where it is, so I should be able to find it without too much trouble. It's right over here. And to indicate where it is, there's a heart-shaped seaweed area around it. Probably done on purpose by the developers. Definitely done on purpose by the developers. Not even probably. <laughs> but inside of these places is some sunken treasure. A water crystal. And some monsters to fight. Uh, we've seen these guys before, though, so they shouldn't be too tough. Uh, let's see. Definitely want to get rid of you. Definitely want to get rid of one of you. Why don't you help out with... Mm, you might even be able to one-shot them at this point, but... Uh, yeah, it's fine. We'll just do that. And are you... Do they have Circle Thunder? I don't remember if these guys have Circle Thunder, but I don't think they have Circle Fire, so... Sometimes they, uh, these uh, caster-looking dudes that are on the left here, not the witches, but these other guys, these familiars and stuff, they have, like, these... They don't have a whole lot of talents. That's the, the gimmick of their class. They're a beast-type monster. They don't have a whole lot of talents, but what they do have is a decent chunk of different resistances. So, like, they'll be immune to, like, Thunder or Mute or something like that. So, it's, you know, it's something, I guess. It's not the best, but it'll work. Got some TNT out of that chest. Probably just gonna sell that. It's useful if you have a, uh, a cyborg, because cyborgs can use their talents rather than a weapon, and it gives decent uh, stats to the cyborg. I'll explain how cyborg stats work when we get them, uh, but it's fairly similar to how robots worked in Legend 2, so... If you know how that goes, then you probably know how cyborgs work in this game. Um, kill it with fire. Do that, and then zap that one. There we go. Yeah, party's working out pretty good so far with Lara here. She's making uh, short work of some of these enemies. Helping us make short work of some of these enemies. And, you know, Curtis and Gloria blasting everything with uh, powerful spells before they can even get a turn because of those psychic knives. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Like I said, humans and mutants usually work out pretty nicely for you uh, in the early game. It's just uh, later on where they start to somewhat start to fall off by comparison to beasts and everything else. Oh, no, I didn't want to dive. Uh, when you want to get back on land, just press B in front of the land, and there you go. And just like that, we're right up here to where the ripe soil is. So let's go plant that seed, and then we'll uh, go from there. I don't even need magic for this battle. I'll just attack things. Nice. Good shot, Gloria. See, these guys don't have enough HP to really make a difference. There's some cyborg parts, but uh, again, we don't really need those right now. Like I said before, probably not really going to bother with much unless I can somehow manage to get two really, like, complimentary meats to get a monster transformation at the next level, level 11. But uh, that's kind of unlikely, honestly. So we may not end up actually seeing any monsters in our party in this particular playthrough. It's just kind of a pain in the ass to get them, to be honest with you. Uh, beasts are much easier to get, and you don't have to worry about doing all of the transformation BS that you had to do with monsters in other games, because beasts just turn into other beasts as soon as you level, and it actually works out pretty nicely. 
Uh, the one that we had before wasn't really a good indication of how powerful beasts could be. So uh, we'll, but when we get our beasts in, at around level, between levels 15 and 17, we'll, uh, we'll get a little bit better of an indication of what can do what. Anyway, here's where we can put the if from seed. So let's put it right on the ripe soil there and, uh, you know, pat it down. Let it be for a little while, and then we'll come back in, oh, you know, 15 years or so, and it'll be all good to go. And I just jumped in the water and instantly got attacked, but to be fair, to strike first, I must have jumped on top of them, <laughs> getting into the water. Uh, let's see, I probably just can use psychic knives here. Once you get to a certain point, uh, the enemies that are in the area just start to be not as, uh, not as troublesome as they were normally. That's usually an indication that you're about to go back to a point in time, though, where the enemies will get harder. Because when we go back to the present, the enemies will be stronger, so... Oh good, Curtis got a level up. Nice. So now he's level 10, and Arthur's level 11. Awesome. Um, I mean, they're getting there. Stats will increase over time as you, uh, as you level up for humans and mutants. It's the same for beasts, uh, cyborgs and robots don't have the same luxury and neither do monsters so they uh monster st stats are set at what they were when you transformed cyborgs have their stats based on uh what you equip to them again like robots in the, in the second game and uh robots themselves use those pills that i was talking about before like humans from the first game so and i guess the second game too although uh potions that it raised your stats in the second game were not nearly as commonplace Again, here you can buy them, um, and that makes robots a little bit busted at certain points in the game, but uh, that's all right, we'll make do. Anyway, time to go back to the present. I don't think there's anything else to do now in the past. Uh, this water crystal, though, I'm actually gonna move down in my inventory because we have 24 spaces to work with down here now, so they've actually increased our inventory again, which is nice. Uh, it helps us out just a little bit. Let's see, I want one, two, three, Four, five, six, uh, let's see. Earth, fire, water. Just gonna go according to the, uh, the order of crystals from Final Fantasy One. So, it, uh, Earth Crystal was first, then the Fire Crystal, generally speaking, you get the Fire Crystal next, then the water, then wind. And there's also gonna be light and dark crystals that we'll be sticking down here. What do they do? I have no idea! <laughs> We'll find out later when it becomes more pertinent. But hold on to them, don't sell them. You, you can, I think, but uh, don't sell them, they're useful. Epilepsy alert! And back in town so I can go dancing. Sorry, couldn't help myself. <laughs> Uh, we already equipped the rover, right? So the cannon's already equipped, we have the flush X usable, and now we can warp to the present, but we cannot depart yet. So let's go back to the present by using the past unit, and then we'll take Lara to the Elder in Darm, and we'll see what he has to say. Maybe he'll, uh, you know, point us in the direction of Kronos again. Epilepsy alert. Because by now, some time has passed in the present as well, which means that Kronos may actually be done hunting for the future unit that we needed, so... I can't jump in here. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. And they might even do it automatically for me, so... Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Nice little convenient skip for me there. Yep, but we decided not to leave her in her time because, well, that would just be silly. <laughs> no, but again, she, she was necessary. Uh, she was going to help the kids here in Darm to actually grow up and not die, so that's good. Good work, Elder. Oh, okay, cool. So he probably either has the future unit or knows where we can find it, so we should probably go and have a chat with him. Alright, Lara, you do your thing. You're welcome. I'm surprised you're taking this so well, considering we literally just brought you to a completely different time, but, I mean, whatever. Uh, don't really have a whole lot here to do. I think I just want to sell that TNT that we got, because I don't need it. It's a one-use item, basically, so, like, you use it in battle, and it'll do lots of damage to, I think, a group of enemies, if I remember right. I've never used it personally. I just, I usually just sell it. Because, I mean, it gets you 850 gold. That's not too bad. So. 
But of course, before we can go to uh, our next destination, we should probably also check out the uh, what's underwater here in the present time now that we have dive. What is underwater here? Uh, well, we need to go to move first, so let's go to move first, and then once we're done there, we can head uh, to the sunken ships. So that's what we'll do. That's what the plan is, and I mean, Kronos, he's probably fine. He can probably wait for me. So, well, it looks like the land's getting sucked up a little more and more as we go here. That's a new ship, but we'll go there in just a second. Let's go see what's in move first. Uh, I think I'll save here. I don't think I need to, but I'll save here anyway. Don't need a quick save slot in this game. We'll get plenty of uh, the things that we need, unlike in Legend 2, so. Uh-oh. And just like I said, now the disease is spreading here in Mu, so either somebody in Lei came down here, or, more likely, they all caught the disease secondhand from us, so. And again, we're not getting sick, so that's also something interesting. Uh, they have some interesting new stuff here as well. They have TNT of their own, a gold sword, I should probably grab at least one of those, and a kick uh, martial arts technique for any of your beasts that you have. Still going to hold off on that for myself, uh, but we'll get there eventually. Um, who do I want to give the gold sword to? I feel like we're going to get a weapon, if I remember right, in the next dungeon that we go to, so I may want to just get one for now. And I might just give it to Sharon, probably. Psychic Knives are still good for Curtis and Gloria. They they could use... Uh, the agility for them is more important than any boost that they can get to their damage from physical attacks, so... Let's give Sharon the Gold Sword. I'll take those nunchucks off of her for now. And then let's just check out the other shops. See if that storage area that they had is done as well. Here's a Cure 2 uh, magic, as well as Lightning 1, which is... Uh, again, two things that I would definitely like to get. Uh, Cure 2, I probably want to get for both Curtis and Gloria, and then Lightning 1, I think I'll just get for Curtis, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. So we'll get two of these, and then a Lightning 1. Slowly cutting into our money, as you can see. Not a big deal, though. Uh, let's see, so we'll give you Cure 2. We'll give you Cure 2. And we'll give, uh, wait, who, okay, so Curtis has Arrow, right? And that's his only, yeah, that's his only, uh, attacking element. I might even give Confuse to somebody else, like, I might give it to Sharon, just because, uh, I don't really plan on having Curtis ever use it, so, might just have Sharon use it if, if needed, so that way everybody's, uh, magic stats and everything are nice and even, their magic lists, that is, so... Empire loves their damn lists. There we go. Uh, any more units here? Two units. I think we saw that before, if I remember right. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So you got two attacking elements, a an incapacitating element, and then cure one and cure two. And same thing for you. Okay. Yeah, that'll that'll work for me. Um, it's, it's spreading the uh, stuff around pretty evenly. I basically have two red mages in my party, but that's okay. Not really a big deal. And we'll do that. I may eventually end up just giving uh, Arthur confused, though, because uh, the way that I'm thinking I'm going to do it is I'm planning on probably keeping Arthur as a human through the entire game and then having uh, one beast, one cyborg, and one robot spread across Curtis, Gloria, and Sharon uh, over the course of the rest of the game. So Again, though, that's probably not going to happen... Soon, it's probably going to happen closer to later. Although, by the end of today, we might be close to where I want to be to get uh, access to beasts and stuff. So, we'll see. Uh, by the way, just in case you were wondering, you, you uh, if you didn't open these in the past and you came back to the present, it would have the same items. They wouldn't have uh, anything different. And as far as I know, that doesn't allow you to get two of the same item. Like, you can't get two Ifram seeds, so, if I remember right. Meanwhile, the virus is spreading here. The water hags are just uh, having a grand old time taking over everyone's bodies. Here's another water crystal, though, so that's kind of nice, I guess. I mean, bit of a trade-off. <laughs> One water crystal for all of these people losing their sanity and turning into water hags? Yeah, I think I'd rather pass on that. We should, we should get a refund. <laughs> 
Uh, you don't sell gloves, do you? Oh, no, you do, dragon gloves. There we go. Okay, so how many of these do I want? I want I'm going to get four, basically, and the rest of these we can get over time, because I don't think I'll have enough. But it will be much better than anything that we have at the moment in our glove slot, so... One, two, three, four, and then... Yeah, I gotta look at my inventory to see what I would want uh, beyond that. I think I can only buy the four, what was it, silver shields? And uh, I, would, I, would, I would have just enough money to do that, basically. But yeah, as you can see, the dragon gloves give a decent chunk of uh, defense to us. So, does it give anything else? I don't think it changes any other stats. Uh, no, not as far as I know, but still, pretty good. It's uh, much better than having nothing at all, so, yeah. Like we've been for a little while, for some of our characters anyway. There we go. And let's see, uh, so bronze, we want to get silver shields. And then, let's see, get rid of those leather gloves. We'll just get some silver shields. Uh, the gold helmet and the gold uh, boots we'll want to get, but we can't uh, get them just yet because we don't have enough money. So we'll get more, though. We'll have enough to buy them uh, in just a little while. As a matter of fact, though, we might not even need to equip those because by the time we get enough money, we might be going to a new... Uh, a new timeline, or a new town, or something like that, you know. Uh, none of the present-day towns have anything new, by the way. All of their inventories remain the same as they were before, so... Don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. Um, let's see. Silver shields. There we go. Silver shield, and silver shield for you. There. Cool. And, um, yeah, so it's just a matter. Probably I would get the boots first, because it looks like we're all still using leather boots. Um, so we'll work on that first, and then once we're done getting the, the gold boots, we'll work on the gold helmets. We might not even need the gold helmets, honestly, because those might be the ones that I will wait to uh, get anything from uh, until the next town, because we have silver helmets, and those will work. So they, they give you plenty of opportunities to get... Uh, new items, so it's really not its really not a huge deal. Uh, I don't gotta worry too much about it. It's like, okay, well, if you didn't buy everything you needed in the previous town, well, no big deal. You can buy new stuff once you're, uh, once you're done. Did I already talk to you? Uh, yeah, that's... Some people would indicate that as a disease, but, alright, you seem to be taking it rather well. <laughs> Uh-oh. A couple of those kids turned into water hags, too. Oh, boy. Well, too bad. The virus already taken a hold of you. Oh, Ashura is back again. Really? Well, that's just great. Yeah, Ashura is apparently the, uh, the person involved in this whole water hag disease, so that's just great. Well, even though they're, they have the whole disease going on, apparently they've got... Uh, Another storeroom being built up. We'll have to check that out when we travel to the future. But we'll do that later. Dana! Oh, excuse me. Rest at the inn. I feel like I already did. Well, I could use a little healing, so. So that's what I'll do. Alright, so that's it for Moo in the present. Now, we need to go to the west and to the east of Moo. So we'll go to the one that we've already seen first, and then we'll head to the west of Moo, and we'll check that one out. Gotta be a little careful down here, though. Some of the monsters are gonna get a little tougher on these ships because it's uh, something we wouldn't have had access to before. So, there's an air crystal for us. I guess it's not called a wind crystal in this one. And there's a tear gas bomb for us. I might hold on to that tear gas bomb because it's actually one of the best, uh, if not the best, weapon that you can equip on a cyborg at the moment. And um, I think it's gonna stay that way for a bit of time. It may even stay that way long enough for us to get the cyborg that I'm looking for. So, uh, stick the air crystal down here. There we go. Keep my inventory looking nice and clean, even though it's not. Looks like my inventory in Final Fantasy XIV right now. I have all these items uh, in my inventory on other pages that I'm using for the uh, facet quests when we go do the Shadowbringer stream. And my... Page one of my inventory looks clean as hell because there's only like five items on it, but you go to the other pages and, well, it, it doesn't look so good. Well, there goes the float land. 
So this one's behind some volcanoes, so you want to go just a little off to the side, and yeah, as you can see, you have to dive down here from up above, or else you won't get here, so. And in this one, there's an earth crystal. Um, I'll move it after we're done in here. Because we got one more item to go grab. I was gonna say, you know, these I usually get into higher numbers of encounters down here, so. Uh, let's see, what would be the most pertinent things to get rid of? Imposter! You are not Ed Boy. No, not that guy. Um, probably the evil eyes would probably be my guess. Although I could have uh, you do that just to ensure the evil eyes are dead. And then whatever you attack uh, when they're dead is, is fine. Ow. <laughs> Quit it. Yeah, as you can see, even with their uh, powerful magic, not quite enough to do enough damage to kill these evil eyes now. You gotta kind of double up on them. I forget if evil eyes have access to stone gaze at this point, so... I don't know, but we'll, you know, get rid of them in case. Because I'd rather not deal with that. <laughs> uh, looks like those imposters aren't doing a whole lot, so we'll just, you know... We'll just do other things. Uh, I think they have Circle Sleep, though, so I'm going to use Sleep over here, and then we'll use Para over here while we double up on the Pixies there. Ow! Because apparently they have, uh, apparently they have some magic, so that's not good. But it's okay, one of them's asleep, and then that guy's paralyzed, so... Yeah, as you can see, uh, now those status effects are going to really start to take effect as uh, some pretty good uh, side things for us, because... Well, it'll keep them completely incapacitated for a little while, which is going to be very good for us. Uh, it means we can use less of our MP on blasting them with spells and more of our MP on just killing them. So, Hey, Conker, it's going good. How's it going for you there? We actually traveled back to the present and took Lara to uh, the town of Darm to let the Elder take care of her and let her take care of uh, Dion and Faye already. And now we're going exploring under the ocean for sunken treasure. That's the plan, anyway. Um, let you just help out over there, and then you two can hit the sleeping pixie. Bam! I think I missed or something on the last turn. That's why that imposter wasn't dead. But it's no big deal. And Gloria and Sharon got a level. We got a good chunk of money. And I need to heal after that one. <laughs> Let's put our new Cure 2 spell to use, huh? Probably don't need it for anybody other than Curtis and maybe Sharon, but that's okay. Might as well. And then Gloria and Arthur can use just a Cure 1. There we go. See? Nice and healthy. Doing good. Just got back from the store. How about yourself? I am doing very well, Conker. Playing a game that I enjoy quite a bit. Hanging out. Just shooting the shit. You know, that sort of thing. So I'm doing good. So did you get all your errands done then, since you just got back from the store? Or are you are you all done for the day, or you got some other stuff you gotta do? Because, uh, well, it would be, what, 2 o'clock in your time at this point? Uh, let's see, Central Mountain, yeah, it'd be about 2 o'clock your time, so... If you were done for the day, that would leave you plenty of time to yourself, which would be nice. Uh, I get the feeling ghosts are both A, weak to fire, and B, probably not going to take a whole lot from statuses, so... I guess we'll have you do this. You go burn that guy, and then you go like that. Oh good, they can frost me. That's fantastic. <laughs> get rid of it! Bah. Ooh, that did good damage. Hitting those weaknesses! That's the thing. I'm just glad that's not really dealing a whole lot of damage at the moment. I mean, it will eventually eat into my resources, because, well, obviously, I mean, it's doing it to everyone, but, you know. Ow. <laughs> uh, how we doing? Okay, Curtis is about where he was before. Um, let's have him start working on this. Uh, Gloria, why don't you paralyze that guy, and then Sharon can help out with this guy, get rid of him. Because that ghost isn't really doing a whole lot, but... After you eat, you'll be working on school and club stuff. Gotcha. Well, keeping yourself busy at the very least, so that's good. Okay, now Arthur should go. He'll take care of that guy in the back. Good. 
Oh, not good. He didn't kill him. Arthur, what are you doing? It's because I didn't get you a gold sword, isn't it? Uh, and then we'll just, you know, attack with our weapons. Oh, the ghost was defending. Okay, that might have been part of it. Or no, he wasn't defending last turn. He, w he is just defending this turn. Okay. I don't know, man. Something weird's going on. But we won anyway, so it doesn't really matter. There we go. Uh, time to heal again. Let's see. Uh, I'll just have you do the cure ones. We'll let Gloria do the cure twos because she's got a little more MP than you do at the moment. Or rather, the single single cure two. Yeah, there you go. Uh, cure two, I should mention, by the way, is not like the potion. It actually restores 60% of your maximum HP when used. So unlike the potion that just restores a flat 100, it restores roughly double what cure one does. So yeah, that's how that works. We already went to the one that was east of Moo, right? I think so, yeah, because we got the tear gas, so, okay. And let's see. Put the earth crystal right about here. So then we'll get fire crystals, we'll get light and dark crystals, and then we'll be good. And that thunder staff I don't think is really going to do a whole lot for us. It probably maybe casts something, but I, it's really not a big deal. Not something that I really particularly care for. I've got the Psychic Knives, those are good enough in terms of weapon damage, I've got the other stuff, so... I might actually get a Gold Sword for Arthur now that I've got enough money, and I'm gonna be selling the Thunder, and... I might keep the Tear Gas, so we'll see how much it sells for. If it sells for enough for me to get all of the items that I want, then I might consider selling it, even though it would be good for, uh... It would be good for a, uh... A Cyborg if we get them. Although I'm thinking about it, and I think in one of the dungeons that we're gonna go to today... Uh, we might get a better weapon than the tear gas, so uh, that would be it would be better for a cyborg because it gives more uh, it gives more stats basically. So not only does it give good HP, but it also gives uh, better stats than what we have there. Okay, well we don't need that. It sells for 850. Um, sure, I'll sell it. We'll get a head start on our uh, on our gold that we need for the other stuff. Get a gold sword for Arthur. There we go. Or that battle axe. What's his hit percentage, by the way? That's a thing in this game, by the way. You can check your hit percentage, and then they also added evade, magic defense, and magic evade into the game. And you can check them on your status menu here, so. It's not just hard built into the weapon anymore. Well, it is, but it's it's not just based on the weapon itself anymore, like it was in Legend 1 or Legend 2. Well, actually, more like Legend 2 only. Uh, but in Legend 3, it's a combination of the character's natural hit stat and also the hit percentage of the weapon. So, And as you can see, Gloria's got the highest chance to hit, but, well, she's probably not going to be using it all that much because she probably won't be using her weapons all that much. So, Okay, so now we need to buy four gold boots, yes? Let's see, because we have leather boots at the moment. Yeah, leather boots. And then we'll be in good shape in terms of our armor. Again, we can buy gold helmets, but uh, I might again I might wait to get uh, the next until the next time we upgrade our uh, our helmets, like at the next shop that we go to. And it looks like we have just enough money to eke out four gold uh, boots, so that's good. Let's equip those, shall we? Worked out pretty nicely, didn't it? And we've got better defense now, so that's also good. Well, we can use all the defense we can get here. It'll it'll definitely come in handy, because where we're going, things are going to get a little tougher. So, excuse me, not exactly a walk in the park anymore. Although we've been, I mean, when we've been in boss battles in this playthrough, we've been getting wrecked. So, <laughs> it hasn't exactly been a walk in the park to begin with. Okay, so if I want to get those four gold helmets, I just need 6,800 more gold, which is like, what, two battles? Something like that. So. Uh, but anyway, I think we've dilly-dallied long enough. We should probably go see Kronos in Alan and uh, see what he's found about the future unit. So let's go check it out after we fight these anglerfish. I mean, I guess that makes sense. We're at the bottom of the ocean, so. These are salt monks, right? So they're not... They're the upgrade from the sea monks. Okay. Um, probably weak to electricity, if I had to guess, so. Probably all weak to electricity, frankly. 
but let's paralyze one of the anglerfish and then let uh, Arthur and Sharon take care of things over here. Zap! Okay, well, he wasn't weak to it, but he looked pretty weak to it. <laughs> oh, good, we even uh, paralyzed the correct anglerfish because the other one's just defending, so... Yeah, that won't be a, uh, that won't be a problem for us. Let's see here... You... Yeah, we'll just have everybody attack now. We got a little time. And it's not like they're doing a whole lot to us anyway, so... There we go. Got one, the other one's paralyzed, so that's good. But yeah, status ailments, even at this point in the game, when mutants still have that damage multiplier on their offensive spells, Status ailments still have their place, because it means that you can uh, conserve a little bit of MP. Which is not a bad thing to do, uh, all things considered. Definitely helps out. Uh, let's see, we'll do the same thing we did last time, we'll just do this. There you go. One of the anglers is defending. I don't know which one it was, I forget what order the enemies go in when they go on their turns. All right, I guess we'll find out in a second if one attacks me. Okay, so it goes from the back down, looks like. So everybody gang up on this one. Whoops. There we go. And once we've beaten this one, we can start working on the one in the back that's still paralyzed. Meanwhile, the one in the front was not paralyzed, but he seemed to be struck by me. That's not enough information to really get the reference, so I can't exactly say, and if you get that reference, you get today's internet cookie. Probably should have kept singing the song. Whoa, that's some big meat. <laughs> it's because it's a big monster. Salt Monk is a water elemental beast. Do I want anything from him? Probably not at the moment. Uh, the, who would I want to give that to if I wanted to give it to anybody? Water would turn either Gloria or Curtis into something I would want. Uh, that would be either, uh, or no, not Gloria or Curtis. Uh, it would turn Curtis into an Earth, and it would turn Arthur into an Air Elemental Monster. So, thought that anglerfish was hit by, struck by, smooth criminal. Well, we haven't really done too much criminal activity in this game yet, if any. I don't remember if we've done any, actually, but maybe that will change soon enough. <laughs> oh, no, I keep I keep pressing A thinking, yeah, I gotta go back on land with A, but no, you, you just end up diving again, so. Just hop my way through. There's the uh, only bad thing we've done, the only illegal, potentially illegal thing we've done so far in the game is illegal uh, chronic jumping. I'll rest at the end, because why the heck not? And then once we've done that, we can go and check in with Kronos, finally. So we can see what's up. See if he's found something, because apparently he has, so. Yeah, this game goes at a pretty decent clip. It uh, doesn't really stop for anything in particular. Like, usually if you're stopping for something, it doesn't take too long to stop and do it. It's kind of similar to Legend 1 and Legend 2. The side content is there, but it doesn't usually last a terribly long amount of time. Uh, it's usually just a little diversion, like with the sunken treasure that we just got, so. So, Kronos, what's up? Oh, okay, I, I figured you had, otherwise you wouldn't have contacted us. Oh, great, of course he does. So, Ashura, again, he's back in this game too is uh, in the South Tower, and apparently he has the uh, future unit. So that's, well, where we gotta go. But uh, first, there's another earthquake. Uh-oh. Something in Lay's Bay. Uh-oh, okay. Uh, is that supposed to be there, Kronos? What is that supposed to be? So there are four, like, supreme water entity monsters. And uh, of them, there's apparently four of them, and Kronos knows two of them, Chaos or Maitreya, and either one is bad news, so... 
We should probably go to Ashura's South Tower so we can go from there. Oh, okay, Kronos has a key. And he made a copy of it for us. Awesome. Thanks, Kronos. So now we have to go to the tower. Uh, in the South Tower, we can get the future unit. But also, we probably need to deal with that, uh, that one tower that just popped up out of the ground down there. I don't think the game explicitly tells you this, but you basically need to go to the South Tower first in order to get... I think there's a key that you get in the South Tower that allows you to get into the uh, one that we that just popped up in the Bay of Lay, so... Yeah, you to assure. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> basically. He's a, he's a little stronger than he was in Legend 2 this time, but he's not as strong as he was in Legend 1, so he... This is kind of like the, the in-between uh, phase for Ashura. Let's see, how are we doing on EXP anyway? Okay, so Curtis will be a level behind for a little while, basically. Until we start getting into the thousands in terms of the EXP we need to the next level. But that's okay. It's not really a big deal. That's a good idea, Floatland. Why don't we float as well? Can't really catch it right now, though. Our island doesn't go fast enough. So... We could always check and see if Lei is there now, although it might have uh, might have sunk into the ocean by now. Uh, usually, the uh, these guys over on the right here, if they're in a battle, they're usually not all that threatening, so you can probably get away with not doing too much with them. Although, I think those pirates have access to breath, which can paralyze you, and we still don't have immunity for that, so... We'll, uh, I'll keep my eye on them, but I don't think they're particularly threatening. I guess I'll paralyze one of them myself. Because why not? <sighs> Excuse me. But yeah, until we can uh, one-shot these guys again with our magical attacks, it's probably better to just uh, use our incapacitating status effects and then go to town on the ones that are left. And then we can just spread the damage out after that. Nice and easy. I think when the game auto-targets like that, I think it goes to the leftmost enemy and the bottom-most enemy in that leftmost row. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think that's how it works, if I recall correctly. I, I think I've seen something at some point that says exactly how it works, but uh, I don't recall. There's some pirate's meat. I think that's also water elemental beast meat, so... I think you can dive down here and, like, check this place out, but again, I don't think you can get in at the moment, so... We might as well check it out, though, because why the heck not? See, as you can see, there's a secret underwater tower base thingy here. Oh! Okay, apparently I can get in. Here I thought we needed a key, but, uh... We should probably go take care of Ashura first, anyway. He's a, he's a pretty big deal. Whoops. I forget, there's some reason why you can't go into that tower for right now. Maybe there's a door later on that you need a key or something. I don't I don't know. Uh, let's see here. So, you put that one to sleep. You paralyze the pirate orc orc thing even in the back. There we go. But status ailments actually work pretty decently in this game. Um, I think they may have raised the base stat for like their chance to hit basically. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but it seems like it, at least the way that I've seen it happen. It seems like status ailments, if uh, the enemies don't have, like, immunity to them, they seem to hit fairly often, so I'm okay with that. Now let's see if it auto-targets over there. Yeah, see, it moves over to the leftmost enemy, and then it goes down from there, so yeah, now it'll target that warrior. Arthur will ar also target that warrior. And the paralyzed pirate will sit in the back and do nothing until I end his miserable existence. There we go. Perfect. Getting a little money together as well. Uh, I think we're close to where the Ifram Seed is and the tower. The, the Ifram Seed is directly next to where Ashura's tower popped up. Spoiler alert for about two seconds from now. Uh, let's see, let's put one of these guys to sleep. I think I can paralyze the warriors. I don't think they have immunity to it just yet. And to be fair, they are the most dangerous enemies here, so... 
Maybe one of these days those pirates will turn into something that's actually vaguely threatening. But that day is not today. Yeah, as you can see, all they got is battle hammers, pretty much. Not really anything that I'm worried about. Uh, let's see, so you're sleeping, you're paralyzed, so now it's just the orc orcs. I'm gonna call them orc orcs probably throughout the whole game, even though they're not. Like, they're, now they're pirates, but... I don't know, orc orc is just one of those names that you can remember, you know? It's like moogles, or chocobos. Just rolls right off the tongue. Brain just registers it easily. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. Now, as you'll notice, though, um, if we're not going to be using our offensive magic as much, although Lightning 1 is still pretty powerful, uh, but if we're not going to be using our offensive magic as much, our mutants can actually accomplish the same things that they're currently accomplishing as other classes, so they'll probably take priority in terms of who I'm going to uh, change into other classes, like who I'm going to turn into uh, you know, a beast or a cyborg or a robot or anything like that, so... I'm not sure about that yet, though. We'll see. And I mean, to be fair, if I really wanted to, I could just go like this. And then probably go like this. And then it'll just be the one pirate left. Or I could miss Lightning 1. Yeah, they uh, they got smart to the fact that uh, magic was 100% accurate in Legend 2. And they said, yeah, we should probably fix that and make it so it's not 100% accurate, so it's not like everybody just wants to spam it, you know? <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. We'll just have everybody kind of split it up. Hit one and the other. Speaking of chocobos, apparently 14 is our four-day free play period for returning players. Nice! Nice. I uh, actually have my subscription again already. Um, I was... what am I doing with it right now? The new update for Blue Mage came out, so I was messing around with that already. And uh, I also am raising a class that I'm not going to be playing in Shadowbringers, but I am going to be playing uh, in the expansion after Shadowbringers. I have the whole story basically planned out for what I want to be doing and the classes I want to be playing over time, so... But we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, it's just uh, just something in the pipeline. Some plans for later. Uh, I don't need warrior's meat. It's earth elemental meat, so it's usually pretty good. But And scorpions and mustangs. Fantastic. I've found the car people. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do to the car people? Are scorpions weak to ice? I'm going to find out. I'm going to test for science. No, they're not. Okay, that's fine. It's really not that big of a deal. Did we get a strike first? I think we did. Usually Arthur doesn't go before the enemies unless we did, so... He's he's a bit slow. He's the slowest of all your party members, so it kind of... Sometimes that bites him in the ass, but... That's okay. It'll be fine. I gotta tell you though, Gloria's getting pretty quick there. Usually Curtis is the one that's the fastest out of everybody in the party, but she's been pretty consistent. Well, actually, no, now that makes sense. Curtis was a level lower than her, so that might be why she was faster. Let's see. Uh, 31 agility. Th yeah, it's because he was a level lower. Okay. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Probably re downloading and installing the game later today, if not tomorrow, to play for a couple of days. Well, that's a good idea, Conquer. I think it's a good idea. You know, I mean, you're going to get four days for free anyway if you're a returner, which I think uh, it's been a little bit of time since you've played, at least from what I understand, uh, what I'm inferring anyway. So, you get four days for free? I don't see why not, you know? Might as well get, get the most out of it. Hey, look, the Ephraim tree has grown rather tall considering it's only been 15 years. What's up, buddy? You got a face. Somebody carved that in? No, he, he just has it, naturally. It's a talking tree! Yes, you did! <laughs> uh, okay, sure, what, what do we need to know? Oh, okay, so Ashura might have one of the units. Okay, thanks, Ifram Tree. Yeah, you can talk to the Ifram Tree occasionally, and he'll give you some advice on, like, what to do and where to go, so... We will probably make use of that at some point, but for now, we'll just, you know, go from there. Uh, how's our MP doing? 
Yeah, we're all right, I think. I, I guess I could go to Moo. It's like right down here. If I just go dive here and then I head down there, I could probably rest up, but... Eh, it's fine. <laughs> I, I just walked down there. I'm surprised I didn't get into an encounter on my way back because I was indecisive, the game punishing me for it, but, well, you know. And we've used the tower key, so let's head inside, shall we? This place might start looking a little familiar. It probably looks an awful lot like the North Tower because, well, it's the South Tower, so of course it will. Uh, let's see. Busy bodies, huh? Okay. Those guys... I think they can use decoy, which can confuse you, and since we don't have anything that can do anything about that just yet, we should probably, uh, well, do something about that. So, maybe put them to sleep. I forget if they can be put to sleep, but I guess we're gonna find out. Yeah, see, there you go. Now they're confusing me. No, well, I can put them to sleep, so that's good. Fireball's a weak to ice, so you can take care of them in one shot. I have two confused party members. This is not good. But, to be fair, Arthur did hit the enemy at the very least. Yeah, they can use, like, burning or something. It's it's a passive ability in this game. You don't actually have to use it, unlike in Legend 1 and Legend 2. It just activates automatically, so that's kind of nice, actually. Uh, but we won't really need to worry too much about that, because we're gonna take care of things now. Uh, why don't you beat that one up, Sharon? Oh, good, a Razor Whip. We could have bought that. It, it, it's a two-times attack uh, thing. Ow! But, uh, yeah, not really something that I personally care all that much about. Oh, good, he multiplied. <laughs> Fantastic, and my person who can normally do something about that is, is a little incapacitated at the moment. Uh, who did I give Confused to? Did I give it to Sharon? I think I gave it to Sharon. So, I should probably cure to Arthur with Curtis real quick, and then why don't you use Confuse on... See, yeah, as you can see, you can not only use it on the enemies, you can also target your own party members with it, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, why don't you heal Arthur before he dies? Okay, that's fine. He's defending. Good, Gloria's back to normal. Uh, that busy body should be dead. Yep. And now... Uh, it's pretty much just the fireballs that we need to deal with, so let's have three people target that. We'll use ice on this one, and go from there. Been a while since you played last. Might get a subscription if your school stuff uh, doesn't get too work-heavy later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta make sure that the school stuff doesn't uh, get too overbearing, you know. Because that's the important thing. That's the most important thing that you, uh, that you need to worry about at the moment, so... There's some busybody parts. They're a decent cyborg, actually, if you want to transform into one. Um, they have access to the Remedy ability, I think, if they're the ones I'm thinking of. Uh, and the Remedy ability allows you to um, heal. It's a talent that lets you heal. It's like between 30 and 50 HP, but it heals it for free, so you, you never actually have to use any MP to use it, which is pretty substantially good, I would think. I mean, it, it's, it's a free heal, so you, you don't have to worry about using your MP for healing ever again, but, eh. It's not really something I need to particularly concern myself about. Alright, let's check this place out. See what we can find in here. Not a whole lot on this floor, I don't think. Eventually, we're gonna fall down here, so I really honestly don't know why I'm exploring these side areas. When we're just gonna fall down into one of them eventually anyway, so... Uh, why don't we have, uh, let's see, we'll do something similar to what we did last time, where we have Gloria take care of one, uh, Sharon and Arthur can take care of the other. And then we'll deal with the busybodies after we're done getting confused and shit. Okay, so that fireball might be the one that's defending, yes, but, I mean, burning, that's not really going to be a big deal. But the, the lack of, uh, what's it called? Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, the lack of him dying kind of kind of doesn't help us all that much. Let me do that. Because the one up top is sleeping, so... Yeah, as you can see, that Razor Whip, not really all that great. Even if they hit with both, it doesn't do a substantial amount of damage, so... I don't think burning activates if the enemy is dying, though. So, like, if you're, if you're dealing the final blow against them, I don't think you uh, they'll activate burning, so... That's food for thought. Eventually, I'll kill this guy. 
Yeah, there we go. Some levels and some more cyborg parts. All right. <laughs> Getting into a few encounters here, and encounters with enemies that I don't particularly care to encounter, too. Um, well, we'll just do the same thing we did. Be full. Because it worked so well last time when I didn't manage to kill these fireballs. Okay. So now all we need to do is have Arthur hit. Come on, Arthur. There you go. Perfect. And the one in the front uh, didn't lose his turn, but now we'll just gang up on him. And before long, we should be done. It's not a bad thing, though, that we're gaining all, of, you know, getting into these battles, because it's going to be good EXP for us, so. We're going to need the EXP if we're going to want to get us closer to getting those transformations that I want to get, so. And I have a plan in terms of how I want to do the transformations. Uh, we're mainly going to be using the North Tower as our transformation hotspot, because the North Tower is in every era. It's in the past, present, and future. And the enemies that are there are really easy because they're all like level two or three. So you can come back uh, basically at any point in the game. Well, up to a certain point. Eventually there's a point of no return where you can't go back to the North Tower anymore. But um, at most of the points in the game for at least the first half of the game, you can go back to it and use it for transformation. So that's probably what we'll do. Getting lots of those parts. That's good and bad because it means I uh, won't be getting them when I need them, potentially. Oh good, Mateys probably should deal with them. That brigand on the left can also uh, can also steal some money from you, but I don't think that's really substantial, so. Um, I don't want to deal with this. Probably like that, and... I wonder if the Mateys are weak to lightning. I guess we can find out. We'll do that, and yeah, the brigand's not really a huge deal, so. Beams. He's trying to, anyway. Uh, let me take a drink. I'll let the game play itself for a second. Yeah, I mean, they do a little damage, but... I mean, the, the Métis just did more damage with just a dash attack. We've seen dash before this, and it still... Still does pretty good damage, so... Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that the lightning did not kill them. <laughs> So, uh, maybe we'll put you to sleep. And we'll, uh, paralyze you. You're paralyzed already, so. Ah, see, there you go. It'll try to steal some money from you. But that's not something we need to worry about, so. Because he missed, so. It's not really, you know, no, no big troubles there. Must have, uh, must have paralyzed the one on the bottom already. Sometimes I forget to keep track of these things, <laughs> even though I probably should be. Yeah, we'll need to heal after this one. I might even leave the tower and go heal, honestly, uh, just because I've only gotten through the first floor and I'm already getting my ass kicked. That's okay. Just means we'll have a uh, greater opportunity. Yeah, we should probably go heal because our MP isn't exactly the best, so. Since I'm only on the first floor, I'll just go heal. We'll explore once we get back. Some robot parts. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Curtis at the very least definitely <laughs> could definitely use the help. Uh, let's see, who else? Let's have Gloria use Cure 1 and everybody else. Uh, actually, have her use it in Curtis too. I could buy Cure for Arthur and for Sharon if I really wanted to, just to get a Cure 1, you know, just so that they have it. But I'm not sure yet. I'll have to figure that out. Let's see here. Probably... Probably want to use Status Magic on the Métis, since it doesn't look like they uh, have any particular weaknesses. Status Magic will work better for us in that department. Ow. Yeah, see, those plumed hats that we got, those plume accessories, rather, that we got, will mean any attempts to put us to sleep will be rendered useless, which is awesome. 
makes it much easier. Oh, good, Stone Gaze. <laughs> I thought they had access to Stone Gaze, I was gonna say. Um, okay, so how do I want to do this, then? Because the Mateys are either paralyzed or put to sleep. Let me take care of you. Why don't you toss out a soft potion for Arthur? Uh, the Paralysis will be able to do that. Something about that in a little bit. Just not yet. But first, let's take care of the, of the uh, evil eyes in the middle, I think. Although, I could probably take care of him with Arthur and with Curtis. And then just have Gloria use Para. See, it's just so useful to have your status ailment magic also be used to heal the status. It, it just saves you on inventory space or in your magic list. It's so nice. Alright, there we go. We'll get rid of him. Fantastic. And now it's just the Brigand and then the Métis, and they're, you know, incapacitated for a little while, so... Oh, there goes one. Which one did I put to sleep? I think the top one was the one that I put to sleep, so... Ow. Oh, we'll find out on the next turn. And to be fair, he'll be dead next turn anyway. How we doing? Eh, we're alright. We'll just attack. And uh, that should be all she wrote. Cool. So now we'll be out of the tower. Uh, yeah, I don't need that. Let's get out of the tower now. We'll head to Moo. We'll heal up and Moo. And then um, I guess I might as well buy the gold helmets. I mean, I'm getting my ass kicked a little bit, so can't hurt, right? Got enough money for it at this point, so. If you didn't visit the uh, the ship, by the way, that in the that was in the past, that's over here uh, south of the South Tower, uh, you can visit it now. It's just, um, it'll have the same items in it as it had before, so, yeah. Um, probably weak to electricity because they're underwater, right? I mean, that, that logic makes sense, right? Well, it's not weak to it, but... Ow! <laughs> Where'd you get that tomahawk, bro? I want that. I forget if a tomahawk is an actual weapon you can get in the game, or if it's just something that they have equipped. Eh, I don't know. Okay, so the one is paralyzed. Uh, I should probably put one of the pirates to sleep. And I think, if I recall from previously, they're weak to fire, so... Although I gotta look out a little bit. Oh, they're werepigs. That's why they're... That's why they're not dying. Because they're, they're werepigs. They're not pirates. Got it. I think where pigs, if I remember right, are a, a level above. So, like these are the kinds of enemies you'll meet later on in the in the South Tower there. So, let's see. Curtis is dying a little, so that's just great. Uh, I think I forget which one was the one I. I really need to start paying attention to which of these enemies I put to sleep or not. Uh, let's see. Why don't you just help out with this guy? So the Pentagon is paralyzed and sleeping now, so that's just fantastic. What about you? Are you alive? No, you're sleeping. Okay. I know, I need to heal Curtis. I'll do that after this fight. He's got some MP left. I'll just have him cure too. But yeah, we're getting some good EXP and some good gold out of this, so I'm okay with it. It will mean we'll be in good shape later on. Uh... I don't need that to Gloria as well. And now we're a little out of MP, so let's just, uh, just head down this way. I should save, actually. Just in case. You never know something bad's gonna happen. So, better safe than sorry. If you ever need to figure out where Mu is, by the way, these volcanoes form a down arrow, and it's directly south of them. So, well, almost directly south. So just in case you need to uh, know where Moo is, when you're underwater. Oops. Okay, well, we spent 718 gold, but that's okay. So let's go buy those gold helmets. We'll, we'll need all the help we can get, evidently, here, so... <laughs> I 
I think that's the only thing really about this game's equipment system is that you pretty much end up just equipping the same things on everybody, uh, at least early on. Eventually your cyborgs are going to end up having different equipment than everybody else because they, uh, the equipment that you give them is uh, what they will end up... It, it, it determines all of their stats, basically, so it's uh, a little bit better to just give them the best stuff so that their stats end up being really high, but... Yeah, it, uh, it just depends on the time of the game that you're playing, so... Like, where in the game you are, that is. Sell these off. And I guess we can go to the item shop. We can buy some more elixirs now, so we can revive people in case we need it, because we probably will need it. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, I'll buy some more soft potions as well. Buy a couple more of these. There we go. Hope you're not superstitious, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm keeping six of these, six of these, and six of these in my inventory. All right, and back to the tower. I don't know if we'll have to do that a whole lot. The tower, I think, is a little bit bigger than the north tower, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, but you're usually, like, level 13 or 14 by the time you get out of there, so... It'll probably end up being about the same. But essentially, once you, uh are almost ready to go to the future, like once we get done with these two towers, uh, we'll have the future unit. So once you're about ready to go to the future, that's usually a good time for you to start thinking about the transformations that you want, so... And that's when we're going to be thinking about it. After we deal with fireballs for days, again, um, let's see... So we'll do the same as we did before. Can't quite incapacitate everybody, but we'll get there. I mean, I guess I could. I could have Sharon use Confuse on one of the busy bodies, but... Eh, it's alright. I'd rather that fireball die, you know? Once Arthur hits something! You gotta get rid of them, bro, or else they're gonna multiply! <laughs> and then... Why don't you help out with... Actually, no. Why don't you do that? So that way we can get rid of them. We'll let you do that. Now they're both sleeping. Oh good, it multiplied again. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we got rid of it, so that's that's the important thing. I forget if um, that changes their HP total, by the way. It might actually drain their HP or like cut it in half or something when they multiply like that, so... I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like it, so... Yeah, apparently not, Conker. <laughs> I mean, he's got an 83% chance to hit, but it's, that doesn't necessarily mean that the 17% chance that, uh, to miss is his true accuracy, you know? This could be like Fire Emblem, where there's the actual hit ac uh, percentage that it displays, and then there's the true accuracy, which is much lower. <laughs> but, I don't know. It doesn't matter particularly. I don't even know what cyborg I would become at this level. All I know is that, again, around level... You know, 15 to 17 is when we're going to want to start thinking about becoming one. And we're not quite there yet, but we'll get there. Uh, why don't you cure Curtis real quick? There we go. That's good. And let's slide ahead. Yep, got to do a little more platforming in here, just like in the North Tower. That's okay. No, no treasure over here this time. They got smart to it. The two games share accuracy systems and code? I mean, I guess that's possible. <laughs> It depends on uh, whether or not uh, they're built on a similar hardware. I mean, I don't know. It depends on how they built some of the uh, advanced Fire Emblem games, like the ones on the GBA. I guess they could all be based on similar source code in terms of accuracy. I don't imagine an accuracy system is all that different from game to game or from RPG to RPG, you know? So. Okay, so it's a little unfortunate that he confused Gloria because, well, she's the fastest person in the party, and also she just got hit for a mighty blow from that flame. But... Okay, Arthur. Hit the guy. Thank you. There we go. So now we can have Arthur and Curtis team up on this guy so that uh, he can save a little bit of MP, and then let's just unconfuse Gloria. 
Oh, good. Thank you. Now, what does that mean is, is going to happen when Sharon uses Confuse on her? Is that going to confuse her again? No, it's going to have no effect. Okay, that's nice. I've never had that happen before, so I wasn't really sure what was going to happen in that particular situation. So it's good that it uh, didn't just confuse her because I got lucky, you know. God, I feel so bad for this monster type, though, these cyborg types. Imagine going to the factory and being built from the ground up as a human-machine uh, hybrid. Everybody else is getting, like, rail guns and shit all over them, and then <laughs> you come out of the assembly line to find that you've become Lip Man. It's like, what did you do to me? <laughs> what happened to my head? Well, it's not puny, I can tell you that much. It hasn't exactly shriveled up. Um... Okay, so probably put the Métis to sleep or paralyze them. Should probably do the same thing with the Evil Eyes, but we'll, we'll get there. So that, you know, they don't stone me again. I mean, it's not like we don't have soft potions, so that will help us to keep that under control, so... There we go. Oh, he took some of my money. Well, that's just great. Too bad, I'm gonna take it all back at the end of the fight. I think that's how it works. I'm not 100% sure about that. It, it's really inconsequential. They take a very small amount of gold, so it's really nothing that you need to concern yourself with. If you have a monster in this family, though, in the hooligan or brigand family or the, that line of cyborgs, you can steal gold from enemies if you so choose. Uh, but again, it's it's really not. I wouldn't waste my turn doing it unless everything on the field is incapacitated because you don't usually get a whole lot of money. Maybe like in the late game, but by the time you get to the late game, that uh, family of cyborgs isn't really available uh, at a high level anymore. So, like you, 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 they're available, but you'd be a low level, and that usually doesn't work out too well for anybody. So, yeah, I probably should give. Uh, Arthur and Sharon cure one, shouldn't I? At least one of them. At some point, one of one of these four is going to become a robot, and they'll have zero MP, though, because robots in this game have no MP. Um, so they won't be able to use cure one at that point, but oh my god. <laughs> uh, run? Yeah, I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> That's way too many busybodies and way too much confusion. About to ask if you're robbed by an enemy, would you get your money back if you killed them? I think you do, Conquer. I'm not 100% sure, though. I really... I, I don't keep track, and again, it's so inconsequential how much money they take from you that it's, it's just... Yeah. I don't really... I don't really care. Oh, this looks a little bit worse for wear than the North Tower, huh? Well, let's see what we can do. Made it, although... Can I open this from the back? Yes, I can. Another air crystal. Cool. And let's go do this. But now, unfortunately, we're gonna have to fall down because you can't, like, you can't stay in one place. Like, you can't just hold a button down or something and end up in one place, I don't think. No. I was, I was thinking maybe I could do it by, like, twisting in midair or something, but no, that's not, that's not a thing. <laughs> Suppose they don't take too much, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, is that it's, it's not really a huge amount of money, so I don't particularly care. So, all right. Same deal as always in this battle, and more than likely, it's gonna end up about the same as always. So, end up with somebody multiplying by accident, and Arthur missing his gold sword hit, and fireball countering with burning. Because why not? Well, at least they're all dead, so that's good. And uh, now we can just gang up on this guy that's alive. We're doing a pretty good job conserving our MP this time, though, so. It's those gold helmets, you know, they were they were so important. I needed them so badly <laughs> that the game just said, nope, you have to leave, you have to go get all the equipment. That one extra defense. And I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making it sound like it's not a big deal. I mean, that one defense could save your life in some cases, but I don't, I don't think it's that big of an issue here. Uh, let's see. Gloria's got fire, so we'll have her take care of the mushrooms. I think they're weak to fire, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll, of course, if I use ice instead of fire, that won't really... Sir. 
that also won't really help me. Okay, well, she came out of it right away. So that's good. Alright, Arthur and Sharon, take care of business with those busybodies. Thank you for doing everything you always do, Arthur. <laughs> Uh, why don't you help out Sharon taking care of one of the mushrooms, and then Gloria, you do that, and then we'll do that. Gotta let Arthur fix his mistake, you know? <laughs> He'll be more accurate later. Uh, you never get above 99% hit accuracy in this game, but he'll be more accurate later. It's just a, it's a problem in the early game because your hit percentage is a little bit lower than it could be. So... Okay, so now that busy body's sleeping. Everybody else attack. Uh, who do you want to use Cure 2? Probably have Curtis use Cure 2. And, uh, yeah, we should be good. Okay. Yeah, I should probably fix that too, huh? Excuse me. And then we'll retarget. Kill this guy now. We'll heal Sharon after the battle. Get more side work parts. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll have Gloria do it. Okay, so she's got 202. How much does this cost? 16. Okay, that's a decent, sizable amount of MP that we're using right there, but that's okay. All right, let's try this again, shall we? Let's see if we can go a different way this time. There we go. And what's up here? Uh, maybe the top of the tower? Almost the top of the tower. There's a... Uh, Another staircase, but that's okay. Oh, fancy. Got some cloud cover up here. Uh-oh. I recognize that face anywhere and those arms, too. Let's see. Uh, how we doing over here? Oh, we should be good. I'm still gonna save, of course, but, you know, we, sh we should be good in most departments here. I'd recognize you anywhere. It's you, isn't it, Ashura? Give us back the units, or else you will die. Oh, great. Uh, so, Chaos's Castle is the underwater uh, tower-looking thing that we saw over there. Apparently, Ashura moved them because he knew he was expendable. Yeah, a knuckle sandwich, right? I saw that coming from a mile away, Ashura. And actually, he looks kind of similar to how he did in uh, Legend 2 there, so they must not have changed up the uh, artwork all that much. It's not a big deal, though. I actually kind of like the sprite that he's got. Really in all three of the games, but, um, you know, particularly here as well. Okay, so he's got some backup to go with him, but we're just going to status them real quick, and then we'll focus our efforts on Ashura himself. Or we'll take care of the, the backup as well. I don't know. I'll figure it out as we go. It depends on who's doing the most damage, and it, honestly, the answer to that is probably Ashura. <laughs> He's, he's pretty strong. He's not the, as strong as he was in Legend 1. He doesn't have flair or anything, but... Uh, yeah, he'll he'll do some good damage, so we should probably deal with that if we can. Actually, I'm going to have Gloria use Cure 1. I'm going to have uh, Curtis use Lightning 1, because it's our most powerful uh, magical attack at the moment. So Yeah, if I see somebody waking up, that'll be an indication that I need to put them to sleep or paralyze them again. So we'll do that when we get there. You won't quite get back all the HP that he's going to deal to you with Fire 1 when you're using Cure 1, but, I mean, it, it does enough, you know? It does enough to kind of maintain you over the course of the fight, so... Eventually it will become a problem, but it shouldn't become a problem before we kill him, so... Yeah, as you can see, he did about 90 there, 93 with each fire, and we're getting back about 70 or 80 HP, so... It'll eventually become a problem, but probably not for a while, so... What I'll probably do is, when the one guy wakes up, I'll probably have Curtis skip his turn and have him do the healing, and then have Gloria paralyze the one that wakes up, just so that that way that's taken care of. Uh, why don't you cure two, just in case Ashura hits you with fire before you get your turn. Or does the Ow! <laughs> or does that! Okay, this could be a problem. But to be fair, his uh, backup is still here, so even if he dies, I don't think he will. Okay, the warrior woke up. So, we have a bit of a situation on our hands here, don't we? I need to revive Gloria. We have elixirs, though, now, so that's not really a big deal. And we need to kill the warrior on the left. So why don't we do this, and you revive Gloria. I think the elixir should give her back full HP, so... 
yeah, uh, Arthur and Sharon can pretty well take the take the hits. It's just Gloria and Curtis, they don't really have an, a lot of HP, so they sometimes when they get hit with something like fire and then upper combination, it it does not agree with them very well. <laughs> uh, let's see, so you're still paralyzed, I think. Yeah, I might as well take care of him, what the hell. And then we'll go back to Lightning 1 over here. Gloria, why don't you keep healing? And then Sharon, why don't you... Yeah, you can help out. Okay, so I just gotta be a little careful because he might hit Curtis next turn with an upper and then, you know, fucking kill him. <laughs> it's okay, though. Yeah, that'll take care of his backup. Good. Uh, he's immune to any status ailments you want to use on, against him, though. M most bosses are immune to status ailments in this game. What they are not immune to is uh, you lowering their stats, though. Most of them uh, can still have their stats lowered, so if you have something like Blitz or... Um, I forget what the other ones are. There's there's a few... I, I know Blitz in particular is one because I'm planning on using Blitz later on to help out with boss fights, but... Um, yeah, if, if you've got any of those, you, uh, you can still... Uh, why does Gloria still have some? Oh, because I used the elixir on her. I was like, wait a minute, why is her HP or her MP so high? <laughs> it's because I used the uh, elixir on her, so that's why. Uh, you know what? Why don't you just keep lightning one? We'll have Gloria use cure. I'll have her use cure two just to top you off, and then we'll go from there. Okay, perfect. That doesn't even uh, matter then. I mean, we missed our lightning, but at least I can't miss my cures. Those don't miss, by the way. They they still have 100% accuracy, so... Man, what a shit turn. Oh, well. Uh, do I need to heal anybody? No. Okay, Gloria, you can go on the offensive on this turn. Um, probably Ice, because he's using fire on us, so he might actually be immune to... Uh, might actually be immune to fire. If you're paralyzed, by the way, you'll still get experience in the battle, so that's not really a huge deal. I do want to fix it, though. Uh, because Curtis will be useful throughout the fight, as you can see. I mean, he's been, do he's been doing the most damage out of anybody in, in this fight, so. And sure has got a decent amount of HP as well, just like most bosses in this game. He'll take a little while to cut through, but that's okay. Um, whoops. Yeah, we'll just do the same thing we've been doing, just, you know, cures and electricity and swords. Sure is defending. That's fine. It doesn't quite cut... Uh, when you defend, that is. It doesn't quite cut damage by 50%. It cuts it by about... I want to say 25%. I could be wrong on that amount. That's just at a glance. I'm doing some like math in my head. But... Uh, yeah, it's not quite 50%. So, like you might expect it to be. There we go, we got him, and we're all alive! Awesome! Everybody can benefit from the huge EXP boost, and we got 10,000 gold out of him, too. As well as the Chaos uh, Castle? Chaos Tower? Chaos one of those things, key. That's good. And now, just like before, we gotta walk out of here, so that's what we're gonna go do. Uh, let me see, how are we doing on everything? I should probably have Gloria heal, because she has the most MP and also is the one that's hurting the most, so let's just fix that, shall we? Have her use Cure 1s, just top everybody off. We don't need it that badly, but she's got plenty of MP to help us walk out of here, so. And we got the Chaos Tower Key, got a Blackjack uh, Whip. I'll probably just sell that. Again, not really a big fan of whips in this game. It's similar to in Legend 2, where it's... I don't know, the multi-hit weapons in this game I'm not really a big fan of. Um, the multi-hit... Uh, uh, monster abilities, or rather beast and monster abilities, are pretty good, but yeah, not a big fan of the ones that are weapons, so. Because they usually don't really deal a whole lot of damage, even if you, uh, you know, even if you use them on humans, so. Uh, let's see, we learned last time that those man-bear-pig things can use tomahawks, although these guys can also use tusk, which is a little bit dangerous, so. Let's just do this and do that and kill one of those guys. Again, the, the middle guy, I'm not really all that concerned about. He's, he's, he ain't nothing. He ain't nothing to worry about. And once we get off of this floor, we can start dropping down uh, 
the holes in the floor, so that'll help us a little bit with uh, getting out of here a little faster. Actually, why don't you help there, and then you two do this, because the were pigs are incapacitated, so. They ain't doing a whole lot. Neither is that brigand, frankly, but no, he might live this turn because somebody missed, if I remember right. Oh no, uh, what's it called? Uh, Gloria missed. Oh, never mind, Arthur took care of it. <laughs> Good work, Arthur. I'll give him credit where it's due. That did help, so. And that also helped a little bit, because this guy will be dead now, and then the only one that's left is the paralyzed one. And they... I think you can eventually break free from paralysis, but for me it usually lasts long enough to where it doesn't matter. Like, I usually... before they even break out, usually the battle's over for me, so... It's worth being on top of it, though, if you, uh... If it happens to your party, because, you, I mean, you don't want to wait that long to get released from it, you know? How are we doing? 13? Yeah got about 600 experience to go before Curtis is 14, so we're getting closer. We're getting closer with every step to having, uh, you know what, those mushrooms aren't really all that big of a deal. Uh, so let's just take care of the busy bodies, shall we? You can paralyze the one that's down there, and then I guess we'll have Sharon start working on one of the mushrooms. So. And once we're done here, um, I don't know if we did a flyover of Lei to see if it was there. Actually, I think if I remember right, uh, based on the way that the world map was in the present, I think Lei is, or would be, exactly where the Chaos Tower is now. So I don't think that the, I don't think it's, it's there anymore, or if it is, um, it probably doesn't have a whole lot going on. I mean, we'll check, I guess. It's right. It should be right near where we're walking around or floating around to get back to Elan, but, you know. Excuse me. And it's not like we have to go back to Mu anymore. We've already got our, uh, all of our gear from there. Get out of here before I get into another encounter within two steps of my last one. They won't even let me leave! But to be fair, I'm just attacking them from behind, so... Uh, you paralyze that one. And you start working on that one. And then we'll go from there. Do I have anything in my notes that I need to think about for recently? Or rather, soon? Uh, important armors are things I have listed there, but we don't need to worry about that for a while. So, uh, I already started fighting. There we go. Okay. Uh, that busybody is paralyzed, so we don't need to worry about him. Let's just smack this mushroom up. Yeah, those psychic knives do pretty good. Even a little while after when they would be useful, they still keep up decently with damage. And again, the plus five agility is pretty nice. So that helps, rather, a decent amount. I mean, hell, they do about, you know, what, 25% more damage uh, than our regular gold swords, even when they, uh, you know, when they get a mighty blow. That's not necessarily very often, but... Okay, strike first in this battle is welcome, because these enemies get a little nasty, so. Let's just get rid of one of the evil eyes while we're at it. Put the one Métis to sleep. Paralyze the other one. And then we'll go from there. There we go. Good first turn. Now, let's uh, take care of business here. Uh, sure, why don't you use lightning? We're almost out of here, so. Métis are incapacitated, so they won't be a problem. That guy might just die, yeah. <laughs> Lightning one is strong, man. <laughs> it deals some good damage by comparison to the other spells. At this point in time, if you're not if you're using fire or ice one, you pretty much have to be hitting a weakness for it to one-shot things, but lightning one will just kill things. It's just it's pretty strong as it is, so. I guess it just depends on the enemy though, you know. No, 
Okay, and evil eye mate, we don't need that. Are we done? Yep, we're out of here. Any other advice, if from tree? Yep, I guess we will, won't we? So yeah, we'll uh, get more advice from him when we get to the future. But for now, he's just gonna hang out. Now that uh, Ashura has been taken care of. Well, let's go fly over by Lei. See if we can find out uh, if it's there still. It would be right about here. So yeah, it's it's not here anymore. <laughs> Apparently, when the uh, disease took over the water hags, they built a tower for somebody named Chaos. So that's fantastic. Hope he doesn't like fully heal himself occasionally during a battle whenever he wants, like he did in the first Final Fantasy game. Although I think he was only programmed to do that like once or maybe twice total. So let's see here. Are we pushing 300 MP now? Yeah, Gloria's got 300 MP. Nice. Hi there. I never talked to you, did I? Oh, okay. So this person would tell you. Yeah. So apparently the disease that was uh, overtaking Lay when we went to the past, uh, it. Completely overtook it, and now it's, you know, the, the town's gone. The tower's the only thing that's left there, or rather the castle is the only thing that's left there. Uh, I forget if... There's an event that happens at some point here. I just forget if it happens now or if it happens later. I'm going to go to the magic shop and see if I can find out. Just before we go off gallivanting in the Chaos Castle. Hang on. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Gotta do it, sorry, it's just, uh, Arthur's gotta practice his hard hitting. Oh yeah, yeah, so she remembers, it, it's nothing really special, but she remembers that you're the one that uh, she gave the, uh, she gave the dive uh, magic to. So that's kind of nice. Nice little uh, callback there. Do I want to get a cure one? I think I will get a cure one just to have, you know, just for Sharon to kind of have it on her person. Uh, since she's already got confused magic so that she can heal that off, you know, might as well keep it for her. Okay, but I think we're all set and ready to go. We just, uh, we, we're missing out on one elixir, but I don't feel like going all the way back to Moo just to get one elixir. We won't need five of them, so let's head off to the Chaos Castle and see if we can take care of business there. And yeah, probably what'll end up happening is after we're done in the Chaos Castle, that's when I'll start thinking about getting transformations for everybody, so. We'll get a couple episodes where humans and mutants get to prove their worth, and then after that it'll be, you know, it'll be the Beast, Cyborg, and Robot show. Whoops, wrong way. Uh, I should probably go tell Kronos that Chaos, or Chaos, Ashura is taken care of. Yeah, Chaos is not taken care of just yet. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a work in progress. And yeah, just in case you didn't think to check there yet, you can get into the castle from underwater. So that's what we're gonna go do. Um, let's see. Anything I want from the item shop? I don't think so. I think I'm pretty well set in terms of my gear. Yeah, we're pretty well set. Okay. Then off we go. I mean, like I said, we already got all of the, uh, whoops. We already got all of the gear that I cared about from, uh, from Moo, so don't need to stick around for any of that, you know. Um, yeah, we'll just have one scorpion left. That's no big deal. Or we'll have one scorpion and one mustang left. Because this time Sharon missed. Okay, that's no big deal. Oh, because the Mustang was defending, okay. Yeah, that uh, that will do it, in terms of it living. If they're defending, it, it increases their evasion, so. And you can defend yourself as well in this game. I don't think I've shown that yet. Uh, I forget what button it is. It's like either L or R that you press, and then you can, uh, it brings up the defense menu. I guess I can show it once we uh, once we get into another battle. Uh, do I want to heal that off? I, mean, I guess I could just do this. Actually, let's have Sharon do it. She, she can heal for... Here's the thing, like I said before. Cure 1 heals exactly 30% of your maximum HP. 
So even humans can get good mileage out of the cure spell by themselves just because of the fact that it isn't dependent on their stats, unlike uh, attacking magic, which is dependent on their stats. So uh, if you want to have somebody using it, it's probably not a bad idea to have a human have some sort of a cure spell. You don't need all of them, though. I wouldn't bother getting Cure 2 at this point, but uh, yeah, it might be worthwhile to have Cure 1 just as a little pick-me-up at the end of a fight, you know, top yourselves off. Oh, good, three warriors. Well, I can take care of that real quick. Um, I might even just have them attack. I might not even use any MP in this battle. No, it's not true, because I'm probably going to want to use some MP on the next turn to help soften up the one guy. I forget if these ones have uh, resistances to ice yet or not. I think at some point they start to get resistances to ice, but, well, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. We're taking care of business, so. And look at that. Arthur's even faster than Sharon, but that's probably because he uh, had a level on Sharon at that point. So, yep, yep, he was level 14. So if your agility is ever a little bit out of whack, it probably has something to do with the fact that uh, somebody got a level on somebody else. <laughs> okay, so now let's dive down and see what we can find inside of Chaos's castle. When we're done in there, we'll probably call it a day once we're done in here, because this place is a little bit of a... I don't want to say it's a maze, but it's a little long, if I recall correctly, so... The layout isn't exactly the same as it was previously, so... Uh, if I recall correctly, you want to go up this way first, but hold right. Aha! We can find a little secret room up here with an elixir in it. So now I don't even have to go buy one because there was one for me just waiting for me to find it. How about that? Uh, I haven't really mentioned it yet, but these Duke guys, like anything in this headless category is usually a pretty damn good cyborg. They usually have some really solid attacks. So if you've been using a cyborg at this point, you can get these guys starting at like level 11 to 12. Um, the headless guys you can get at levels 5 to 6, and they're pretty good to keep at that point, but, well, the gear that we have just isn't good enough, I think, uh, to really justify having a cyborg just yet. By the time we get out of here, that'll probably be a different story, but until then, well, we gotta make do with what we've got. Okay, so, I don't want to do this. Uh, these guys on the right here usually end up being immune to sleep, so, excuse me, probably don't want to hit them with that. I'll just hit the other guys with sleep. We'll take care of the Duke, because he's got some decent stuff, and, um, yeah, those loony guys, I mean, they're, they're immune to sleep, but they usually don't do a whole lot in terms of the uh, damage that they can output, so. The Duke is the most dangerous one out of all of them, I think, uh, although maybe the, um, okay, maybe I was wrong. They do decent damage with that. Maybe the, uh, Reaper is in the middle because of Spin Cut. Apparently, they also have Cell Fix, so that's just fantastic. Um, I don't want to do this. Actually, why don't you just attack? Help out there. Have Gloria actually hit with her Ice Wand, and then you know, we'll go from there. There we go. Yeah, still weak to it, and they still get one-shotted by it, so. I don't know if they ever get, uh, like, if they ever become not weak to ice throughout the whole game. I think they're every single enemy in that enemy group is weak to ice throughout the whole game, so... But I'm not 100% sure about that. I don't recall any not being weak to ice out of that enemy group. So... Okay, that takes care of that guy, so now just this Reaper with laser! But, well, he didn't really get to use it all that much because, well, he, uh, he missed! Must not have been an instantaneous laser. Must not have been very hit scan of you. Uh, let's see, we could use a little healing. We'll have Sharon do a little bit of it. Uh, that's pretty good. Hey, you're doing pretty good with the, that white magic there, Sharon. It's, uh, it's doing pretty good for you. And just like that, we can pop right out of here and head back down here. Now, can we... We can go up this way. Is there anything over here? I forget. No, there is not. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know this place like the back of my hand, so I don't really know the way all that well. Okay, up and over here. And if you held right on the staircase, you could have gotten here without having to go up and all the way around, but eh, it wasn't that consequential to us. So. Oh, great. <laughs> Right, let's check down here first before we uh, go jumping around the holes here. Although it looks like the, we're going to be jumping around the holes anyway. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's see here. Let's probably take care of the evil eyes. Should probably put you to sleep because you shouldn't be immune to it. Maybe paralyze one of these guys and then take care of the other evil eye. Some of these battles get a little long here just because of the fact that... Uh, they don't give you a ton of crowd control in the early game. Um, I mean, they give you single target moves, but you can't multi-target stuff like Sleep or Para, as far as I know. I mean, I guess I could try it. So, we'll check it out. Yeah, probably better to have that Magician sleeping. Probably wouldn't uh, work out too well for us if it didn't. Yeah, see, so you can hear it going, eh, eh. Uh, that's because I'm trying to press up or left, which in this case would target a group of the enemies there. Um, but, well, it's not letting me, which means that I cannot multi-target with uh, para or with sleep, so. And I guess we'll start dealing with these two guys over here. Because once we paralyze that guy and we get rid of the evil eye that's over here, it's just those two loony guys on the left. And if we can deal with them next turn, everybody else will be a cakewalk. Because then we can deal with the witch, and then we can deal with the uh, owl, or the magician, excuse me. And then we can deal with the uh, other guys after that. So, gotta watch our HP a little, though. We're starting to get a little, a little on the weak side. But, I mean, most of the enemies that can be uh, consequential in this battle will probably, hopefully, be dead by the end of this turn. We'll see. Yep, there we go. We got two paralyzed enemies and one sleeping enemy now, so. Now it's pretty easy. We just target this person because, again, paralysis seems to last longer, at least in my experience, than sleep, so. Target over here, get rid of the sleeping enemy. Now there goes one of the loony guys released from paralysis, which means he'll start working next turn again. It's not like in, um,. It's not like in modern generation Pokemon, it's more similar to classic Pokemon, where if they recover from a status ailment, uh, like let's say they were sleeping and they woke up, in newer generation Pokemon, they will simply start attacking right away there, or using whatever move you have them use right away. Uh, in this game, they it takes a whole turn for them to get themselves back on their feet, so... And if you were ever wondering where Pokemon got it from, well, it probably has something to do with exactly what I just said, so... Let's use up a couple of our Cure 2 potions, because why the heck not? We, we'll either end up using them now or later, so might as well conserve a little bit of our uh, MP, you know. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, let's see, that'll just lead around to those, although now I gotta go this way, because I went down the, the escalator. So. Oh, those guys are a little tricky. Dual masks there. They're the enemy that, uh, they're as in location, they are, the other word. Uh, the monster that I was thinking about having somebody transform into at levels 11 to 12, but it didn't really work out. Um, they have Circle Change, though, which makes them uh, pretty good against, like, Ashura, because Ashura would use fire on them and they would take no damage from it, because Circle Change in this game is like Circle Damage in the previous two, so. But, as it is, they, uh, I didn't end up getting one, and they will uh, probably do some bad things to me if I don't take care of them right away. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take try to take care of them right away. Okay, let's put the centaur to sleep. Uh, I forget if I can put the dual mask to sleep, but I guess we'll find out next turn, because I don't really have anything for Curtis to do next turn. Although, I could probably just... Uh, start attacking the Iron Rose that's over there. Although that's gonna be Gloria's job, so. Maybe we'll just have everybody else gang up on the Dual Mask and then have Gloria use ice on the uh, Iron Rose because the Centaur's sleeping, so. Should, uh, should work out okay for us. There we go. That guy should be dead now, or almost there. 
Oh good, he has Sneer as well. Sneer, not only does Sneer inflict damage, it also confuses you, so that's just great. <laughs> uh, high priority target, as you can see right there. Uh, do I want to unconfuse you? Not really, I think I'd rather just attack. Yeah, there we go. See if Sharon had got her turn, and uh, used Confuse there, it would have had no effect, so it would have wasted her MP a little bit. Which I would rather not do, um, if I could afford to not. So, I'd rather save her MP for Cure 1, just like that. And Gloria, why don't you Cure 1? And, uh, Curtis, why don't you Cure 1? You seem to have a little more MP than Gloria does at the moment, so that's good. Okay, now, where are we going from here? Looks like up here. I think we eventually want to get off to the left, but uh, that's where we came from. Okay, so we can go this way now. We can go up here, grab this treasure. But how do we get out of here? Heyo! Can jump right over. Yeah, don't forget about that because that is important. <laughs> how do we get over this one? Well, redirect ourselves with the escalator and then jump right over again. See? That's not too bad. I like the way that they implemented these little uh, jumping puzzles in this game. It's nothing really, you know, out of this world difficult or anything like that, but it's, I think it's done fairly well. I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's really all that invasive, but at the same time, it'll, it forces you to think a little bit on your feet, you know, outside of just a fight. It's not like you're just moving from point A to point B like you were in previous games and uh, all the thinking was done in battle. No, now you gotta think a little outside of battle too, which I always appreciate. I always appreciate when a game has uh, a system where it has me thinking in multiple different areas, you know, rather than just in the one. In case you were wondering whether or not I was gonna give this game a glowing review, well, uh... <laughs> You can probably tell by my tone of voice these past couple episodes that this game is going to get a fairly uh, good review by comparison. Uh, it'll probably be fairly similar to Legend 2, honestly. And really, it's not really a... Um, it's really just a matter of preference which of these two games you prefer. Like, Ghost Hand prefers this one because of the aesthetics and stuff like that. I prefer the second one because of its gameplay loop. Um, so yeah, it's... But really you're not wrong. It doesn't matter which case, which one you enjoy and which one you don't. Like, they're, they're both very good games, so uh, definitely worth the price of admission, I would say. Uh, let's see. So, put you to sleep. Ice one of the Iron Roses. And kill the other Dual Mask and hope I don't get sneered again. Yeah, 420 damage, though, with that Ice one. That's an elementary level spell and it's doing that, you know? That's still pretty good. Ow. There's a little bit of extra fire that I didn't need. Okay, that's one. Okay, he's just using flame again, except he used it on a single target this time. Yeah, some uh, monster abilities you can single or multi-target like that, so. I think usually the monsters choose to multi-target them in most cases, but uh, not always, so. Why don't you start working on the centaur while uh, Gloria finishes that iron rose up? I'm probably gonna regret that. <laughs> okay, Sharon didn't get confused, that's good. I'm just checking over in this section of the map, by the way. Like, when we get out of the battle, you'll see that I'm over in a corner here. I'm just checking to see if there's any, uh, like, hidden rooms or anything. Like I said, I don't know the maps in this game like the back of my hand, like I do in some of the games. And I don't have the maps right here with me because I was like, eh, I don't really need them all that badly. Well, I'll find my way, you know. But, um, yeah, I figured I'd just use what I had on hand, you know. Just use my brain a little bit, unlike usual. <laughs> uh, okay, and then do that. Sharon's doing pretty good on her MP still, though, so that's good. I mean, worst comes to worst, if I have to, I'll just switch the Confuse and Cure 1 spells to Arthur and have him use them instead. Give Sharon Float and Dive temporarily until, uh... Like, until Arthur runs out of MP, so... Uh, let's see here... What was I doing? I'm just checking this for a hidden passage! Just like this. 
Any treasure in here? Oh yeah. An earth crystal. Awesome. Good thing I grabbed that. I didn't wasn't sure if there was gonna be anything hidden there, but usually when it looks like that, it looks a little suspicious almost. Like there was just that section there. Like normally they just have the walls on the outsides of the towers like this, you know? So they don't uh, when they don't have them just on the outside edges, it looks a little suspicious. So uh, I might be able to do one of these. Yeah, there we go. And then do one of these. And then get attacked by monsters. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let's see. How about sleep? How about ice one? How about kill the dual masks? Yeah, you almost get into a bit of a rhythm with some of these enemies here because you end up seeing a lot of the same uh, enemy encounters when you're on certain floors. because It's because we're on the lower floors, really. We'll start getting newer enemy encounters later on in the tower. But, um... You almost get into a rhythm where it's like, okay, well, I know exactly what I'm going to do in this fight now. I'm going to do this and this and this and this. So I guess similar to Legend 2 in that respect. That, uh... That rhythm, fe that rhythmic feeling to each fight. I feel like the battles in this game go a little slower than they did in Legend 2, though. But that's probably because in Legend 2, you could just blast a whole group of enemies to death with like, a fire spell or something, you know? And you get to that point eventually in this game, but... Well, it's not now, so... Yeah. We'll, uh... We'll just have to make do until we get to that point. Although, really, I don't know if we'll get to a point where my mutants will still be in the party when we can, uh blast the whole group of enemies with, you know, crowd control stuff. Because we'll probably get rid of our two mutants by the time we get there. We'll end up having one of them being... Well, the, the two of them will together be two out of three of either Beast, Cyborg, or um, Robot. So, and we'll jump like this. We'll see what's in here. Another gold... Uh, gold glove. Is that better than dragon gloves? Let's see. No. Slightly worse. Okay, well, I can sell it at the very least, so that's good. And then jump over here. And encounter four dual masks, so that's just great. Uh, let's see. So circle change, but they might still be affected by status, in which case uh, I probably should have been doing that to begin with. Yep, still affected by status. Okay. You'll still see them attempt the uh, status magic there if they're immune to it, but it'll just say no effect. So, yeah, that's how that works. And now we just target this guy until he's dead. And then the other two on the bottom are inconsequential because they're incapacitated. And, uh, yeah, we'll just target a few of them, and we'll go from there. We'll be in good shape. Just keeping up with, uh, keeping the enemies from getting their turns. Like I said, Paralyze Sleep in this, Paralyze and Sleep in this game, very good statuses. <laughs> Definitely well worth using, uh, in basically any situation. And it's, it's one of the reasons why... It's one of the parts of this game's battle mechanics that I really quite enjoy, is the fact that status ailments are actually remotely useful for a change, which in some cases they're not, so... It almost looks like we've hit a dead end. Where do we go from here? Well, I'll show you in just a moment. Once we're done fighting off these dukes and their Reaper friends... As long as one of the Reapers doesn't assume direct control of this form, I think we'll be okay. I was thinking about doing that. Um, I was thinking about playing a modded playthrough of, well, Mass Effect 3 originally, and then it ended up being basically the entire Mass Effect trilogy that I was thinking about playing. Um, basically, after I helped Cole doing his uh, modding for his Skyrim uh, file that he has already beaten at this point, he beat the whole thing like fairly quickly. Uh, uh, surreally quickly, unnaturally quickly, but then again, he uses fast travel in the game and I don't, so that's probably uh, part of the reason. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, he beat his file already on there, but uh, after I was done helping him mod it, I started modding my own Skyrim, but then I was like, I don't know if I want to play it right now. 
But you know what? I could keep modding things, and I'll just, you know, use the Mass Effect games that I have on my computer, and I'll modify those, because... Well, what happened with Skyrim Special Edition when it came out was that the mods that were available for old Skyrim were not compatible with new Skyrim. And I'm willing to bet that the same thing will happen with the Mass Effect uh, Legendary Edition. The uh, stuff that was uh, able to be used on the Legendary, or on the original versions of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 probably won't be able to be used on uh, Mass Effect's Legendary Edition. You know, probably, the mods just plain old won't work, and the mod managers probably also won't recognize them, so there, there'll have to be some work that'll have to be done in order for them to uh, be moved. But uh, for us, we don't really have to do a whole lot of work to continue because there's a door right here. Yeah, there you go. I, honestly, that door blended into the background for me the first couple of times I came in here. I was like, wait a minute, where am I supposed to go? And, well, I figured it out eventually, but, well, yeah, it took a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's see, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I figured before the Legendary Edition comes out, I might as well try to... Uh, use the, uh, do some of the modded stuff that I was planning on doing anyway, uh, just so that that way I can get it all modded and ready for myself. I've been kind of weaning off on that a little bit lately, but that's because I've been busy on Final Fantasy XIV with Blue Mage stuff, so. But I would rather get them modded now rather than later, because if, uh, they do what they did with the remaster of Kingdoms of Amalur, with the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, like when they released the re-reckoning version of Kingdoms of Amalur on Steam, they completely removed the old version of Kingdoms of Amalur from the store. So like the only version of Kingdoms of Amalur you could buy now is the re-reckoning version uh, remaster. And I think that was done because of licensing issues, so it may not become the same thing with the Mass Effect games, but just in case it happens again with it, I figure, you know what, it's probably better to get the mods in now before it's like, well, if I had to rebuy it, I can't rebuy it because it's not available on the store anymore. Like, if I royally fuck something up and I have to, like, reinstall it or something, not rebuy it. I'm making it sound like I'm going to spend 30 more dollars. <laughs> no, in case I need to reinstall anything and I need to, like, you know, uninstall the game because I ro royally fuck something up. Uh, wouldn't be possible, I don't think. It was not... Uh... Oh, excuse me, on the store anymore. Okay, nothing there. And I don't think there's anything off to the sides here. This is where we needed the, the key, right here. You could have gotten all the way here before this without the Chaos Castle key, and you would not have been able to, to advance, obviously. It wouldn't have let you, so. Uh, let's see here. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing okay. Everybody's doing pretty good. Sharon's MP is looking a little bit low, but we have elixirs if we need to restore our MP at any point, so I'm not really too concerned about that. And again, worst comes to worst, I'll just give her, uh, I'll just give float and dive to her and give Arthur the curative magic, so. Is there anything here? Yeah, there's something right here. Okay. Let's go check it out, shall we? Okay, looks like there's a bunch of different uh, paths that we can take on this floor. So let's just start with the one that we already know. One that we already are aware of. That probably leads back into the center room right there. This looks like it leads... Okay, there's an enemy right there, which is probably the boss of the area. You can see him through the wall there a little bit. But this looks like a, a way forward. It doesn't look like a treasure room, so... Let's just take a look around, shall we? So this just leads back into the center room. We'll map it out a little bit in our heads here, won't we? Uh, okay, so these guys are starting to get a little bit tougher here. Horuses and Fiends. I think the Horuses are still weak to Tornado, so Arrow should do pretty good against them. Um, and I think they're still vulnerable to Paralysis, so we'll try that. See how this works. Yep, still weak to it. Awesome. <laughs> Eventually, they lose that weakness to Tornado. I think... In the next set of enemies in the Horus line of uh, enemies, they lose their uh, weakness to Tornado. They end up having a weakness to Mystic Weapons, which is something we don't even remotely have access to at this point. But, I mean, it's it's Mystic Weapons. You would expect it to be something for later in the game, right? Considering, considering the name, Mystic Weapons. Okay, that's large meat. 
Um, I don't think I want a transformation just yet. Horus, I think, is fire elemental, so I would have to check how that would do uh, with us at some point here. I think if I remember right, fire elemental meat, I want to have courtesy, right? Let's see. That would turn him into a water. So no, not, not Curtis. Uh, I would want either Gloria or Sharon to eat. Uh, if Horus gave us meat again, I would want either Gloria or Sharon to eat it. And then they would become our resident beast for the playthrough. So. But we'll worry about that in a little while when everybody gets to level 15. And then we have access to some better monsters. So. Uh, let's see, how did we do this last time? We just did this. You used Arrow over here. You used Para over here. And you helped out over here. Yeah, we'll probably have to use an elixir by the time we're done here. Ow! So, just because uh, we'll, we'll run low on MP, or we'll, uh, you know, we'll run, run out of uh, the ability to cure people. So, we'll have to deal with that before we move along here. Uh, why don't you cure two, since you've got more MP. And then you just help out over here with the fiend. Now, because the Horus isn't really doing a whole lot, he's paralyzed, so he's not really something I gotta worry about for a little bit. And I guess now I can worry about him, but only because he's in my way. You know, why don't you heal yourself just so I don't have to do it after the battle? There we go. Just because I'm lazy. <laughs> That's it. Nice. Good shot, Sharon. Arthur got a level, Sharon got a level. We got Paramagic. Okay, well, that'll sell for a little bit. I wasn't honestly aware that enemies could really drop a whole lot of different magic. Like, I've, I've gotten a little bit of magic occasionally from enemies, but not really a whole lot. Like, I didn't realize those guys could drop Para. That's interesting. I guess if you didn't have it by this point, it would be good to have now, but, well, we've, we've had it for a while, so... <laughs> Uh, let's see. So we'll do this. Take care of those guys. Okay, so the Reaper that's on top now is not really a big deal. We'll just have that one dead. Hopefully the Duke will be dead by the end of this turn. Then we'll have Arthur and Sharon focus on the Duke again. Ow. Uh, the second Duke, that is, uh, in the next turn. And then I'll paralyze one of the loony guys. And we'll go from there. Yeah, take a bit of damage from these guys when you get into big encounters like this, that's for sure. Uh, let's see here. How do we want to do this? You para over here. And yeah, we'll do that. How much will this do? Pretty good, actually. <laughs> Not enough to kill him, but pretty good, no matter what. Oh, did I kill the wrong one? I think I killed the wrong Reaper. I was supposed to have that one asleep up there, but uh, that's okay. Ow! Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Uh, let's see. Why don't you do that? We'll heal after the fight. Get rid of that guy. Ow. Maybe I should have healed before the fight's over. But it's fine. There we go. Got them all. Almost. Almost got them all. Uh, am I going to get a turn before Arthur gets rocked here? No, we'll see. Yep. Cool. No, he's defending. Okay, well, he won't get rocked then anyway. Glory got a level. We got some parts. Don't need those. Uh, yeah, I should probably heal people now. That seems like a good idea. Um, should I use two elixirs? That might not be a bad idea, actually. Because their HP is lower than maximum and they could use the MP, so... Yeah, why not? I got enough of them. You know, I might as well. And then, Sharon, why don't you use your cures to help you and Arthur out? Because you still got some uh, MP left. You got about three more cures in you, so that's good. We'll save here, and let's check what's up here, shall we? Ah, there we go. Treasure chest. A Psy armor. Awesome. 
So that is an interesting piece of armor because it will actually give you plus five agility, which is pretty good. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think who I want to give it to. Eventually I want to, will want to switch it off of somebody and give it to my cyborg, I think, because the cyborg that I'm planning on getting is going to be able to resist confusion. And, uh, well, we'll find armor that resists confusion later on, pretty much after this dungeon, of course, after it would be helpful, but... That's okay. Not really a big deal. And, um, let's see. Who do I want to give it to here? Probably Arthur, because he's got the lowest agility out of anybody, so it'd probably be worth it to give it to him. Although it might be better to give it to Sharon, just because she has, uh... She has the magic, you know what I mean? So, she, she's got Cure 1 and Confuse, so if she needs anybody needs to get unconfused, it's probably better for her to have it, so... And, of course, it's better than the, the silver armor that we had by a, a decent margin. So that's good. Will help us out. Okay, uh, I'm happy with that. Now let's uh, head back down, because you can't go out here, so... And uh, we know the other staircase is up here, so now we can continue with where we were going. Okay, so who's the biggest threat here? Probably you? Let's see if we can put uh, one of the pixies to sleep, I think. We'll paral try paralyzing the dual mask, and then we'll take care of this one. Yeah, now Sharon should be the one that goes first, because she's got the extra agility, so... Might even affect her damage output as well. Uh, not 100% sure about that, but... It might. Like, make her do a little more damage. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it did a little more. That might have just been a roll, but... I've done a little more damage than uh, expected, which is good. Uh, let's see, how do we want to handle this? Why don't you help with the Fiend, although you might not actually get to kill the Fiend, because, you know, he's got a lot of HP, so... More HP than we could probably do with a couple of Psychic Knives, that's for sure. I probably should have just had one of them hit the Pixie with a Psychic Knife, because as it is now, we probably won't uh, get out of this turn killing anything, so... But that's okay. Now we will. Uh, why don't you do that, actually? Okay. Well, he can't cast any spells anymore, but that's okay. That's not really a big deal. We'll just attack normally. We got all of our spells off at the beginning of the fight anyway. Whoops, I accidentally pressed fast. That's my bad. Yeah, we did all the spell casting we needed to do at the beginning of the battle to incapacitate everybody, so... And Mute will go away at the end of the fight, so... It's fine. Oh, we got a Lightning 1 magic out of that as well. Nice. I'm not sure if I should probably give that to Gloria, maybe? Maybe. I'm not real sure. Okay, so Sharon, here's what we're gonna do. Gonna have you cure one here, cure one here, and then cure one here. And then we'll toss this stuff back in the bag. Arthur, you toss your stuff back in the bag. And then we'll take it out of the bag. Go like that. There we go. See, now Sharon has zero MP, but she can still use uh, all of the match. She can still use Float and Dive, because they don't have an MP cost. So, And now Arthur can heal for her. Bit of a roundabout method of doing it, I'm sure, but hey, if it works, it works. Um, was there anything to the right here? I forget. If we looked. Yeah, there's nothing to the right here. Okay. I probably looked and just forgot. Short-term memory loss, you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, definitely a treasure chest there, and definitely an enemy sticking out in the walls somewhere there. Well, we know Arrow will deal well with this. We know Para will also deal well with this, and then there we go. But yeah, get used to seeing that zero that you see in the MP column there. It might not be for Sharon herself, but it might be for one of... It will definitely be for one of our party members. They will have zero MP constantly, because they'll be a robot, so... Yeah. But that's not something we got to worry about just yet, so... Um... Uh, no, no, uh, Gloria's got more MP, so why don't you cure one? Our friend who is par uh, poisoned, not paralyzed. There we go. Just top him off real quick. Before the end of the fight, when he 
plunges that out of his system. Just like that meat just plunged down to try to drop on top of me. See, game, you're throwing these enemies at me as if this is supposed to be a hard encounter, but since I know what uh, status ailments do in this game, I, <laughs> I have a bit of an advantage against the enemies that you think are being difficult for me. Unless they dodge para. That, that's, that's a talk shit get hit situation right there. <laughs> that's what happened just now, is I was talking shit about the enemies, and then, well, they were like, oh, you thought. Uh, who's got more MP between the two of you? Oh, it's bar barely a difference then. Okay. The Glory is probably faster anyway because she's, you know, slightly higher on EXP than Curtis, so... Yeah, there you go. We're creeping up there on our levels, though, I think. Yeah, we're... Uh, Curtis is probably almost at 15. Yeah, he's got 130 left, and then Arthur's got 550. Uh, once you hit 15, if I recall correctly, it starts to get a little bit harder to level up. Uh, the enemies will start giving you... They start giving you the same... They're still giving you the same amount of uh, experience, but you just need more of it in order to level any further. It's... it's. I guess it's done to discourage you from doing too much level grinding. Uh, and, I mean, to be fair, we haven't done any, and we're still doing fairly okay, so... Uh, let's get rid of the Fiend. We'll do the, take care of the dual masks after. That's probably a mistake, but I'm going to do it anyway. Although, if I am faster than those guys, it really doesn't matter too much. Yeah, that's not going to... That's not going to help you, fiend. You have silenced the wrong person. Okay, so one of the dual masks is still up and running. Okay, this could be a bit of a problem, because our uh, person that unconfuses people is silenced. So now it'll get a little more interesting, won't it? Well, she's confused now, too, so... Actually, it might even overwrite... Uh, so that guy's asleep. Okay. Yeah, it might even overwrite the uh, the silent status. I'm not sure how that works exactly. Ow! Exactly. Well, Arthur's dead. This is gonna be a fun fight! Oh, yeah, it's gonna be real fun! <laughs> Uh, run? Yeah. Because that was not going my way. <laughs> not at all. Okay. Oh, Cure 2 should handle most of that. Yeah, there you go. And another Cure 2 from here. Yeah, that, that fight was not going my way, so I figured, you know what, let's just get the heck out of here and not even, like, not even worry about that. There's a fire shield for us. I'll probably give that to Arthur since he got uh, shafted on the Psy armor. Might as well give him a better shield, right? Gives him a little more defense, and it probably gives him immunity to either fire or ice. Uh, they're, sometimes they're wonky with which one does which in these games. I would say it probably, judging by previous ones, it gives him immunity to ice, or resistance to ice, that is. So, But it'll help us out. Uh, I think I'm going to save real quick, just because uh, <laughs> that last battle spooked me a little. Gotta be a little careful now. Okay, but not against these guys. These guys it should be. I mean, we, we still gotta be a little careful, but... By comparison to the previous battle, where I was getting blasted with magic left and right and all that stuff, eh, we're probably okay here. Ow. That was the uh, enemy ability thunder, by the way. It's a little different from the mutant ability thunder, the, like the ones that you would buy in the shop, and it's different usually because of the same reasons that it was in Final Fantasy Legend 2, because typically the one that monsters can use is weaker than the one that you can just buy in the shop. So. Of course, in this game, the prob uh, that whole problem that was uh, happening before of durability is completely eliminated, because there is no durability in this game, so I yeah, don't even have to worry about that. Uh, you know, everybody's basically level 15 now. I probably could have eaten that meat and done something with it. Although I don't have, uh, a martial arts technique, so that might, uh... It might be better to have that before I start thinking about my transformations, but I don't know. I'll figure it out. Uh, let's see. 
Gloria, why don't you do this? And then I'll have Arthur do the rest of the healing. Yeah, why not? Okay. And up here... Should be almost there now. Yeah, we can kind of see the boss from here, so... Or at least what looks like the boss, anyway. Nope, getting a little ominous. Everything's getting symmetrical on us here. <laughs> okay, yep, there's the boss that we want to encounter. And, you know, he kind of looks a little familiar. He looks a lot like those woodmen from uh, the previous game. Probably done on purpose. They're just, you know, they use, reuse the assets where they can, just so that that way they, you know, don't have to do a huge chunk. Like, this this is the only time you'll see this sprite in the entire game, so might as well, you know. But anyway, let's see if we can take care of business here. Uh, so we can fix the future, because the future is ruined and needs us to, needs us to fix it. And, you know, we kind of want to go back there. Well, you're gonna have to try a little harder than that. I will not be doomed by anyone, except maybe you, because that's an unexpected attack. Oh good, he's got Quake. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, uh, Quake does a lot of damage to your entire party. Good luck! <laughs> so, probably what's gonna end up happening is we're probably just gonna end up having Gloria and uh, Curtis heal. Just the entire fight, basically. Uh, we'll just have them swap between who heals whom over the course of the fight. And we'll just have uh, Arthur and Sharon do other stuff. Ow! Other stuff. Like, we'll have them keep attacking while uh, the others heal. So. As long as Chaos doesn't do... Okay, do exactly that! God damn it. Shouldn't even have thought it. Yeah, thanks. That That's real helpful, Curtis. Okay, we'll just have him toss an elixir next turn, and we'll be okay. Gotta have those elixirs. They're fairly useful. Alright, ideally he'll go before... Never mind. Before that. Okay, he's just defending. That's fine. Yeah, he's not easy, Chaos. He'll, uh, he'll deal some good damage to you, that's for sure. Uh, I forget what he's weak to and immune to. And I guess I'm gonna find out. He's a big rock monster, so probably lightning is not gonna be too useful to us, but maybe ice will be. I usually don't get an opportunity to attack too often uh, in these particular fights uh, with my mutants, so... Yeah, we'll just do what we can. Okay, well he's not immune to that. But yeah, when he's not using Quake on you, it, it helps a little bit, because it means that you can kind of just be like, okay, well, I'll take one person's turn to heal off the stone, or to heal off the whatever the heck else. Then we'll go from there. Of course, when he does use it, well, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? So now we'll unstone Curtis. Yeah, this is a tricky battle. It's probably one of the harder ones in the game, if not the hardest one, frankly, now I think about it. Uh, Curtis, you're okay still. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have Arthur help out with the healing. <laughs> he could use, a use it a little bit. Uh, we'll have him top himself off. Curtis, why don't you help Gloria out. Gloria, you heal Sharon, and then Sharon attack. Okay. Because if he gets ahead of you on the quakes, well, uh, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't have any heal all abilities yet in the game that you have access to. I wouldn't be shocked if we were able to get it in the next town, to be honest with you. That's usually how it goes here in these particular cases. Uh, I could probably use a Cure 2 on both of my mutants. And Sharon, why don't you toss a Cure 2 potion for yourself, just to top yourself off. Okay, that, that works, actually. That's That means I can get up to full health. We can heal Sharon next turn, and uh, then we'll be good to keep attacking after that. Yeah, this is a tricky battle. Uh, don't, uh, don't get twisted. It's pretty tricky. Actually, uh, Curtis, you should be attacking. Lightning One is still our strongest attack, so... You de-soft Sharon there, Gloria. There you go. Ow! Stop it. 
I forget exactly how much HP Chaos has here. I want to say, judging by previous bosses, he's probably got about 7,000 HP, but I don't know that off the top of my head, so... Yeah. Uh, probably should use Cure 2 over here, and then just keep attacking. Ow! <laughs> Uh, he, he deals some good damage, don't he? Good lord. Uh, how's Gloria gonna do in the next turn? That's something I probably need to think about. 132 HP, so yeah, we definitely need to heal her. Uh, she's got more MP, so... Yeah, we might as well have Curtis attack with her. I know he's using his MP to, heal, or to attack there, but we've got elixirs, so... Hopefully we've got enough. <laughs> Let's not forget we still have to walk out of this place when we're done. Good lord, man. Okay, well that's not rather helpful, Arthur. Uh, cure yourself. Why don't you cure to yourself? You cure to yourself. And then... I think your HP's okay. We should be able to cure to you next turn and be okay. It, like I said, humans in this case are more durable, so they can usually take a hit on the next turn. Like, in that particular case there, Arthur could take a hit, even though he, uh, you know, was getting hit by a pretty strong attack. He had enough HP to last through it. Um, in the mutant's case, they usually, if they get hit by Quake and then one other thing, they, they, it's, it's Sayonara. So... Um... Yeah, you can use Cure 1 because you have less MP at the moment, so do that and that. But it's a bit of a tough battle. Um, it, it, it's not really that involved, like where there's like a whole bunch of status ailments and stuff going out, but then again, I mean, there's there's a decent chunk of things going on here, like all the damage that's going out, you have to kind of micro micromanage, microcosm, yeah, thanks. Uh, micromanage over the course of the fight, otherwise you end up getting blasted and you have to use some of your elixirs. Again, thankfully, elixirs are available at this point, but not an easy fight. We got through it, so that's good. Everyone's alive, 645 experience for everybody, 10,000 more gold to use, and we get access to more monsters, so that's just great. Run! <laughs> I, I won't be running from all of the fights. I'm just gonna I'm running from that one because I didn't heal. I was hoping I could get to this treasure chest before I had to heal again, but apparently I was wrong. How about now? There we go. And we received the future unit and the hover unit, another one of the engines for the uh, Talon there. So that's good. We got access to some solid uh, stuff out of the Chaos Castle. Now we just gotta walk out. And once we get out, uh, we'll probably head to Elan, we'll head to the inn, and we will probably save it before we talk to Kronos and everybody else, just to see what's going on. Uh, one Horus, okay. Well, thank you for taking it easy on me, game. <laughs> but yeah, this dungeon's a little tricky. There's a lot of floors to go through even before you just get up to the boss, and the boss itself is fairly uh, difficult, so... Okay, we're level 16, so I think I may actually want to use this meat to get a beast now. Um, let's see, my notes are spinning on the other page, so... Let's see here. So, this is fire meat. Have I saved after the boss fight? I don't think I saved after the boss fight. I'd rather not redo Chaos, so I think we'll leave this meat. But I'll see what meats we get on the way down. Um, that should make it a little easier to justify using it. So, okay. So let's save now. Yeah, we didn't save before the f or after the fight, because otherwise Arthur would be level 16 on that list. Uh, Curtis, how are you doing? Oh, he's almost 16. Okay, cool. And let's head down, then. Walk back down might actually take a little less time, because there's a few holes in the floor that we can take advantage of. But we'll see. It, it's, uh, that's an unknown until we get there, you know. Uh, we can para you. And do that. There we go. It's 
It's gonna be sad though when we uh, start getting access to beasts and everything else. The the sad part is gonna be that the elemental attacks that we've been using to exploit enemy weaknesses up to this point, they're not really gonna be all that useful anymore because even if you hit a weakness, uh, no other class in the game besides mutants gains a an attack multiplier from attack magic. Uh, they can't do double damage with attack magic. You can't do double damage with attack magic unless you're a mutant. So, uh, because of that... Oh, look, Para got, uh... Oh, yeah, it's two of them all stuck in the same area. Normally, stuff like that, it would end up taking up its own inventory slot. Another reason why inventory in this game is a lot better. So, excuse me. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, attack magic with mutants... Uh, gets a two times damage multiplier, but you don't get that with any other class in the game. So, like, arrow and fire and ice and lightning and all that stuff, we're not really going to have much use for it anymore once we switch over to cyborgs, robots, or, uh, or beasts. So we're going to have to get rid of it, unfortunately. It, it won't really do us a whole lot of good anywhere uh, anymore. I mean, I guess if you hit an elemental weakness, it uh, will still deal okay damage, but it probably won't deal as much damage as you'd get out of just doing other things, so. Well, we're striking first, so that helps a little bit with making me want to actually fight this battle. Um, let's see, paralyze this guy, and then take care of that guy. And then we'll go from there. I must have missed with one of my swords there. Well, that's okay. Do that and that. And then just make sure we kill that guy. There we go. Oh, okay, so he must be immune to para. So what'll happen is if if it's if they're not immune to it, but the status just misses, it'll just say miss. It won't play the animation. But if it plays the animation and says no effect it means that they're completely immune to the status. So that means fiends are immune to para. So i have to keep that in mind for later. I guess just, you know, knock him down real quick. There we go. And then we'll just start dismantling the pixies in the dual mask that are left, little by little. There we go. And then that. Got a little more, and then that one will be done. See if we can conserve our MP a little bit on the way down here, just because uh, once we get out of here, we still got to get back to Elan, so. Still got a few floors left before we can even get out of here, so. Although, again, there's a lot of uh, holes in the floor to take advantage of between here and there, so. Just make sure you remember where the door is. <laughs> uh, I'm going to save real quick, just since we've gone a little ways since our last save. Just for safety. Uh, this puts us over here. Okay. So if you missed that earlier, I guess you could have dropped down right there and ended up finding the secret passage without even trying. So, And just like that, we're out. Awesome. Okay, so that went fairly smoothly. I mean, chaos was a little bit of a problem, but we, we took care of the problem eventually, and we all stayed alive for it, so that's good. Okay, I need to go rest at the end. <laughs> I know Kronos has things he needs to probably tell us, but I got I gotta go rest at the end. I need to, need to take a bit of a chill pill after that. Dungeon really took it out of me, you know. We're gonna have to go back to Moo as well to restock on our supplies, so. But we've got plenty of money with which to do that now, so it shouldn't be really a huge deal. Alright, let's go see Kronos. After, actually, let's go sell stuff and then we'll see Kronos. Okay, there we go. Um, I don't want to sell. Well, anything below the elixir line, basically. Because <laughs> we probably don't need any of the other stuff. If I needed it, I've probably equipped it at this point. Don't need those relaxed potions. That's not any better than what we've got. Neither is that. Won't need that for anything else. And I can't really sell those, so... <laughs> I don't think they would want to... I mean, they might want to buy them, but I don't think it would help us in any case if they did. So, let's go buy a few more Cure 2 potions. I think I should be able to get them from here, if I remember right. Uh, no, this is... I was thinking of past Elan. Okay. 
That's fine. We can get more Cure 2 potions in a different place, like in Moo or something. So. Alright, Kronos, we got the stuff and we took care of both Ashura and Chaos. So now what? Yeah, I actually, I know that. I just figured you'd want to know that we took care of business here. Um, I forget if there's anything else you need to do before you go off to the future. Hmm. I was figuring Kronos would say, hey, you did a good job, now go use those units to go to the future. But apparently he did not. Is anything else going on up here? No. Okay, I'm thinking of something else. All right. Well, since that's the case, I guess there's nothing else for it. Let's just take the future unit back to the Talon, and we'll travel to the future. Although we're not going to do that yet, because we do need to go to get our monster transformations all set and ready to go. Um, so let me... Before we do that, I'm going to go re uh, buy up a few more supplies, just restock on Cure 2s and Soft Potions. I need one Soft Potion, a few Cure 2 Potions, and a few Elixirs. And then I'll be good to go in that department, and we can... Uh, We'll probably end up holding on to most of our money, because, well, there, we have a lot of it, so... Uh, would it be quicker to get a move, go to move from here, or... No, well, I don't know, but we're gonna find out in a second. Let's see. So, Confuse, give to you. Cure 1, give to you. Float, give to you. Dive, give to you. Just for now. Okay. Now we can dive. And head up. Whoop, nope, actually. I recognize this coral formation. Never mind. I thought I recognized this coral formation. I did not. Yeah, it moves right over here. There we go. I was gonna say, we're a little too far to the south to be in Moo already, aren't we? And then I learned. Yes, I was correct. Uh, what do I need? I just need to go here and restock on a couple of items. Okay, so, like, four of these. A soft potion. And, uh, three elixirs, I think. Yep, there we go. Okay, so, now the other thing that I want to do is I actually want to go and grab some of the, uh, like, you know the, the, the quote-unquote pills, the ones that you can use to increase the stats of your robots when you get them. I actually want to go grab a few of those. Whoops. Uh, because we're going to be getting a robot in just a little bit here. Since, uh, like I said, before we go to the future, whoops, I want to uh, get my party kind of set up the way that I want them to be for a little bit. So, let's see. I think I can get two of them here, and I can get two other ones in Darm. So let's go get these ones. Yeah, defense and speed are here, so, like... I'll get six of those. Six of these. Is that five? I think that was five. Let's see. Yeah, six and six. There we go. And actually, how are we doing on experience? Because I don't want to transform into a robot until we're level 17. Okay. Hmm. We're not quite there yet. Well, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. I mean, I guess I could get some of the transformations done, like do my cyborg and beast transformation. Uh, I think I have the, I want to do the cyborg transformation. I know the beast transformation I can do right now. That's not a big deal because, well, beasts from here on out are gonna be pretty good and they'll just change by level, so. Yeah, that won't be a problem. Um, let's see here. How do I want to do this? Well, I know what I want to do first. I want to go back to Darm and grab six of the... Uh, what's it called? From uh, six of the, the executables from over here for, for your robots. Um, I guess I need the experience so I could always fight these guys. They're not going to do too much for me, but... Let's see, do that, and then... I don't even know if I need to double up on these enemies anymore. Nope, apparently not. I have to keep that in mind. Because now he's gonna kill the one that just slapped, right? Oh, well, he didn't kill it, but... Okay. That's fine. Yeah, that 
that longbow's not really going to do a whole lot. The poison will do even more uh, than the longbow. So, how about we put you to sleep, we paralyze the Mustang, and then uh, we establish that Sharon can one-shot these guys on her own, so. That's that Psy armor helping out her attack power. I mean, Arthur's getting close. He's just not quite there yet, that's all. Ow. Stop it. I must have missed with sleep, huh? Okay, well then we'll just, uh... Let's see, we'll do that. We'll do that and that. Because the ones on the bottom row there, the scorpions, are all, uh... uh either paralyzed or sleeping, so... And that takes care of the ones that were already weakened, so now we can just take care of the ones that are down here. Yep, there we go. We'll need to heal again when we go into Darm, I think. <laughs> this poison's doing a number on me, but that's okay. Probably be better if I had an ability to cure it, huh? But I don't, so no big deal. Got a good chunk of money out of that, though. I guess while we're here, we can see if the Elder says anything new before we head off on our merry way. Let's see here. Okay. Now, um, right here. And we have defense and speed ones from Elan, so that means the ones here should be HP and attack. I think. I love how I bought that curtain to block out volume, and I can still hear it way more than I can hear my own television. I don't know how well it's being picked up on the microphone, so I can't really say one way or the other. But, yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> okay, we got six of each. That's good. Uh, that should be good for now, anyway. We'll, we'll be able to buy more at a later date when we, you know, actually have to concern ourselves with it. Alright, let's go see if the Elder says anything new, and then we'll have basically all of our supplies. We'll go from there. Ah, so that's why you wanted her to be here, because her magic will save the city someday. Yeah, th again, this would have been nice to know earlier. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, Dion and Faye, we're going to be going to the future, so we may not see you until then. It'll be probably 15 years, so... Yeah, you do that. I don't think they ever say anything different, honestly. But that's okay. They're just kids, after all. Okay, now, let me see here. Yep, so I think we're in good shape right now, other than the fact that we're a slightly lower level than uh, where I'd like to be for the robot transformation specifically that I want to do. Um, but other than that, I think we're in good shape. I do, however, need to do a little bit of uh, research in order to figure out which transformations I want to do. Um, so, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to float my way over to the North Tower real quick so that we can uh, gain access to some low-level monsters that we can kill fairly easily, so we can get the transformations that I want with little to no trouble whatsoever. And then we'll take our newfound people that we get here, cyborgs, beasts, robots, whatever we end up with, and we'll head off to the future on the next episode of Final Fantasy Legend 3, the stream edition. Thankfully for you, there isn't any background noise from your end, so I'd say the curtains you got is doing its job. Okay, then good. Good. I'm glad that it's not picking that up, because I, I'm, I'm hearing it. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. No big deal. As long as it's doing its job, that's the most important thing. So yes, we'll meet back here and go do some stuff in the North Tower on the next episode. Thank you for watching, everybody. I appreciate you coming out to Twitch and YouTube to check out the stream, and I will see all of you on the next one, which will be on Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, everybody take care, and have a good one. Did I just save? I think I did, but I'm going to save again. Just just because. Hypochondriac, you know. <laughs> you play these old games, and you just end up saving way more than you need to, just because you want to make sure you don't lose anything. Oh, boy.